tis the drama of October, darling. We are in for quite a show this month, so be prepared. Welcome to the soap opera that is October. In this video, we're going to go over what it means for your sign. Your rising sign will resonate most, but you can watch whatever signs you want to watch. Before you go, just know that October is a month. <laughs> it is a month. This is a month that we are entering into that has the ability to change a lot of things, to alter a lot of things in our lives. Some will feel it more than others. So there's nothing to be scared of except fear itself. <laughs> because of the Scorpio eclipse that we are having at the end of this month, that is definitely going to bring up some profound shifts in a lot of our lives. With that being said, there can be just the paranoia around it that is the actual issue here. And so we have to really, really make sure that we are not in this fear, paranoia, chaotic insanity of this energy, right? So try not to fear it. I am going to try to show you the beauty in this because that is definitely laced into this eclipse. There is going to be beauty in it. There are going to be things that really actually end up setting us free and clearing and paving a path for us, but it's just a matter of seeing it. It's a matter of how you're perceiving it. With that being said, if you are not already, make sure to follow me on Patreon if you want to get exclusive horoscopes each week from me so you can keep up on a week-to-week -week basis and know what to prepare for each and every day. Along with other exclusive content that I post on Patreon, there is at least one or two exclusive things weekly that are happening. So if you are interested, you can literally sign up for as low as $5 a month and start getting a horoscope every week. So definitely make sure to check that out down below. And also I am open for readings, personal readings. So if you would like a personal reading, that's linked down below too. If as well, you would like to learn astrology easily, I have a relatable foundational astrology course that will teach you how to read not only your chart, but other people's charts like a pro and make astrology very easy to learn and very relatable. So everything's linked down below. I also do a shit ton of other stuff. All of that's down below. Also, by the way, I've been kind of rearranging. And so some of these may look a little bit different than other ones because of the rearranging I've been doing. So just so you know. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the horoscopes for October. Okay, starting with you, my lovely Librans. My lovely fellow Librans. And Libra Risings, Libra Moons, Libra Suns. Let's go ahead and see what's coming for you in the month of October. Happy birthday if you are a Libra sun. Happy birthday to us, I should say. This month, Libra, we have a very interesting month, a very big month. This is a this is a big deal, right? So our birthday month is definitely coming in hot, right? As you start the month, you may be feeling very good. It can feel very refreshing. Like, yes, I'm in my element. I understand this energy, I get this energy, I know how to look at other people, I know how to relate to other people, I know what other people are, you know, I, I'm skilled in the art of others, right? I can get down with this, right? But as we move throughout the month, especially in the very first week of the month, there's a lot of powerful insight coming in. You could really have some powerful insight about behind the scenes things that have been going on, maybe uh, some health things that were inner health things, either inner or external health things that you've been kind of cleaning out and clearing up, right? It's like you've been, you've been really reorganizing the back end of your life in some way to reflect in your physical life, right? And so that's kind of where, what we're doing in the beginning of the month. But as we move throughout the month, the energy is going to change, especially around the middle of the month where we have the Aries full moon. And this is happening in our seventh house. And so there definitely may be some things around that time that bring up a lot of energy in terms of your relationships and how you feel in terms of your relationships and how the other person feels in terms of your relationship, right? 
they definitely may be feeling very fiery, right? There may be a lot of individuality that comes up. We have the spirit of fire here. So it may be a little bit less about we and a little bit more about we or vice versa around that Aries full moon. But there definitely can be a possible chapter closing in terms of a relationship. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, your relationship is going to end or anything. It just could mean that maybe there's an old situation that you've been working out with your partner that comes to an end around that time. Or maybe it means that there is a shift in the dynamics of your relationship, right? So it's interesting. We also have the, uh, we have a few other cards here actually that I'll, I'll wait on. I'll go over in just a minute. Let me finish going over the astrology. So this month is really a month where Libra, there's a lot of energy kind of pushing you to see where you don't feel safe and secure in yourself, where you may feel a little bit like you may feel like you need external things to keep you safe and secure. You definitely could be feeling a lot coming up in terms of your situation, your financial situation, especially towards the end of the month as the Scorpio, that Scorpio solar eclipse sets in and your ruling planet Venus moves into your second house. We're going to see a lot in terms of where you are feeling lack in your life. We have the Queen of Pentacles reversed here. So where you are feeling a deficit, where you are feeling a loss of something or a, you know, a, a, some kind of lack, some kind of insecurity, right? Where are you placing value around the lack versus where are you placing value around abund abundance? And so this is an opportunity for you to step into your power around finances, around your values, around your commitments, around what you're saying yes to and what you're saying no to, right? This is very, very powerful because if you continue to put value into things that you actually don't value or put value into things that actually bring more insecurity or lack, that is not helpful. So I'm going to explain what I mean by this, right? So let's say that maybe you're in a relationship or in a friendship with someone that you kind of always feel a little bit on the outs with, or you always kind of feel like the underdog in the situation, or, you know, you, you kind of feel like you, you can't really stand up for yourself. You can't really speak up for yourself in a situation. And let's say that this situation is actually a mirror. It's actually reflecting back to you where you don't feel uh, confident and stable within yourself, secure within yourself, because if you did, you would stand up to them, right? It's these kinds of situations that we miss, right? It's these kind of situations that we don't really all the way pay attention to. We think that to have some kind of new beginning, like let's say you want to make more in terms of your job, in terms of money, in terms of your income, right? We don't see the situations that we need to clean up now that are lacking, right? Where are we saying yes to lack? Where are we saying yes to insecurity? Where are we committing our time, effort, and energy to things that actually drain us, right? So this is a monthly, bro, where you could find yourself finally kind of standing up. Even with when it feels like the odds are stacked against you. Because you know that you can't keep feeding this lack within yourself. You can't keep feeding this insecurity within yourself. You also have the spirit of alchemy card here, which is about transmutation, manifestation skills. So it's literally time to take your own skills, to use your own skills and to transmute this lack, right? And we're going to talk about a little bit more on how to do that in a minute. It's time to transmute your skills and and it's time to transmute these situations and use your skills and turn these situations that may feel like lack into something that work for you instead of continuing to say, oh, I can't, right? Where are you saying you can't? Where are you not in your power with money? Where are you not in your power 
with your values? Where are you not in your power or your integrity in certain situations? That's what's gonna come up towards the end of this month, especially, right? The beginning of this month is kind of like a breeze. It's kind of like, you know, yeah, there may be some things that, some profound insights that happen, you know what I mean? And we're kind of just chilling for the most part in the beginning of this month. But as we move throughout the rest of the month and get to that, you know, get to Scorpio season, there's going to be a metamorphosis, a transmutation that needs to happen, some alchemy that needs to go down here where you have to take certain situations that you've been thinking that you didn't have the power to really do something about and start doing something about them, right? Because by not doing something about them, you're feeding that disempowerment. You're feeding the powerlessness, right? You're saying that I can't do this because I don't, I can't. Who, me? I couldn't do that, right? And that feed, that just breeds more luck. You're saying that you're lacking in something. I'm not good enough to do that. Or that's not ever going to happen to someone like me, right? So this is a month where you may be feeling a little bit more like I'm ready for freedom. I'm ready to create more flow in my life. And to do that, you have to move out the old. So with this Scorpio solar eclipse coming at the end of the month on the 25th, this is definitely going to be a time where it's like it's time to get rid of the past. Get rid of what's no longer serving you or adding to your power. And as I'm saying that, we have spirits of the past, but it was reversed. Nostalgic, aching, old flame. This is literally the ultimate cleaning out your closet kind of energy, like QM and M, right? Like this is the ultimate skeletons in the closet. What are you hanging on to? What are you attaching to? Because you think you need it out of survival that needs to go, right? Because you're holding on to it out of a fear, but that fear is not even real. The fear is an illusion because guess what? You're a powerful ass bitch, right? Or dude, badass, whatever, right? And this is where you're guided to something even bigger, something even higher, something that actually feels more faded, more destined, etc. So that is basically what I am seeing here for you, Libra, this month. Uh, we also have Sagittarius and Trine, which like I said, there is an energy of more freedom this month, more flow this month. Uh, you could be looking into traveling maybe, or actually some kind of movement, maybe even a short trip. Could be some risky energy. You could be learning something new as well with Mars in your ninth house. Could have something to do with your significant other since Mars rules your relationship. So there could be, you know, uh, out of town relationships or out of town connections that is coming up here but also with the seventh house like I said we have that Aries energy so you're really learning more about how to balance those themes of self and other how to find that middle ground between what you desire versus what your partner desires versus what you desire together right and so that's really coming in here so that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra. Let me know down below if this resonated with you, if this was a powerful message that you needed to hear for the month of October going into this month. Please come back and let me know what all happens for you this month. I would really, really, really love to hear how this eclipse goes and how this month goes for you, what you guys are feeling about this month. And I will see you guys in my other videos. Don't forget to subscribe and have your notifications on. Bye. Alrighty, Scorpio, let's get to your astrology and tarot for October. So, Scorpio darling, we start off October with a more chill energy. You know, you've been really focusing on some behind the scenes things recently. And you're going to be feeling maybe a little bit more secluded, you know, maybe a little bit more out of the spotlight. You're really focusing on what's going on in your life that needs to be cleaned up on the back end, right? Instead of so much on your external reality, it's been very much more about your internal reality. So there may have been a lot of rest that's been needed recently. Maybe you've been seeing where there are subconscious patterns or healing that needs to take place, especially in terms of relationships, boundaries, 
people pleasing, where you feel in the middle of certain situations or where there needs to be a rebalancing of your internal world with your external day-to-day -day reality and routines, right? And so these are some of the things that you could still see kind of rippling over into October that you've likely already been noticing a lot, you know? And then on top of that, in the beginning of the month, the intensity of this last Saturn Uranus square that we've had for quite some time now on and off the last couple years is finally coming to its peak. And this has been really happening in terms of your relationships your close relationships with other people, and also your family, your personal life, your foundations. You know, what you want in terms of your relationship life, your love life, but also what maybe holds you back, what limits you in terms of your family responsibilities, your home life, your past, you know, skeletons in your closet that maybe need, uh, you know, cleaning out boundaries or restrictions within your personal life, family life, or home life. You know, all of these things are definitely possibly coming to the surface as we enter October. But since this is the final square, there may be a closing, a, like a, a chapter closing here with that, you know. And so there is something that you could be breaking free from in terms of, you know, your relationship with your past, your relationship with your roots, where you come from, and the limitations that have been holding you back in your personal life and behind the scenes. You know, this month we also very much have a lot coming up in terms of your physical health, your physical vitality, the energy and effort, the actions that you're taking in terms of your work life, in terms of productivity, you know, and this is a time where, like I said, in the beginning of the month, you could especially feel this energy of leaning back a little bit more, chilling, you know, enjoying the moment and like being in the vibes <laughs> rather than like rushing to get things done. But when we have this Aries full moon around the ninth, that could shift a little bit where it's like, okay, you know, there are some things that need to be figured out here. There are some actions that I need to take or there's something that comes up with work, health, or your day-to-day -day routines that you really need to kick back into gear, right? And so that's kind of where things start to shift in October because not long after that, we will have your season starting, right? And this is a big deal as we are ushering in your season, Scorpio, because we're going to also have eclipse season. Since the south node has been traveling through your sign, you know, we're going to have a solar eclipse. And this is a massive, massive, it's kind of like a void, right? It's creating a void in your life, within yourself, of something that is going to be created from this place. So it's planting a seed, a pretty big seed actually, that is likely going to ripple. And it's going to show you where in your life you are not living by your own standards. Where in your life you need to raise your standards because what you've really been learning in 2022 so far, Scorpio, wow, is that there is also power in stability. There is also power in a sense of groundedness, a sense of security, a sense of abundance, especially in terms of your relationships and your connections with other people, right? If you're a Scorpio ascendant, Scorpio sun, whatever, you know, Scorpio is a dark, unsettling energy and it can feel chaotic it can feel uh unstable at times right and this south node moving through your sign has shown you that there is another way that there is a power in stability because scorpios are so used to finding their power by falling and rising again by falling by falling by falling by transforming by the metamorphosis by the lack you know that is how if you are a scorpio ascendant or a scorpio sun or have a lot of scorpio placements i have mars mercury pluto and scorpio so i get it right like a lot of the times we are so used to finding that that golden nugget that that power within us in those really tough difficult times right that's when we are really 
used to finding our power. It's like we have to hit that rock bottom to be able to bounce back. And I was just talking about this in my Phoenix, <laughs> perfect, uh, perfect Scorpionic program my uh, Phoenix program the other day, how hitting rock bottom is like a launch pad because, and that's why so many people, because I've, I've been thinking about this lately because I've seen so many reels and stories and like before and after reels and stories lately of like, oh, I was at my worst, I was like homeless or I was on the verge of homelessness or I was in this abusive relationship, I hated my life, everything was falling apart and I like boom I freaking just out of nowhere like shit changed and I launched and now I make this much and I have this success and I have a great relationship and I'm you know my own boss and whatever right and the reason for that is because when we hit that rock bottom we have faced such a huge fear we have faced so many huge fears by that point and we survived and so the rock bottom becomes the launch pad to get to where we actually want to go right because there's no more fear anymore there's no more limitations anymore we're just like we've almost been stripped of everything and now we're like okay let's go right if i can survive this i can survive anything all that shit that i was scared of before all that shit that i was attached to before all that shit that i was hanging on to before doesn't matter because i just survived some really dark heavy shit right so i can make it through anything right and that's kind of the scorpionic nature it's always looking at what other people aren't seeing it's always looking at the lack it's always looking at what's behind the veil right what is behind the veil with the high priestess here and we do that scorpio energy does that because that is its nature but with the north node moving through taurus this earthly beautiful more abundant lighter energy right where it's like oh the glass is half full now instead of half empty we're no longer seeing just the emptiness we're no longer seeing just the lack we're no longer seeing what's missing all the time right we are starting to see what can be what can be created rather than what's destroyed or what's lacking or what's missing or what's been you know deconstructed or what's been taken down right what's died now we can see what also what can be created right and so we're no longer looking at everything from this glass half full mentality and we're beginning to see like oh there's another side to this like there is power in security and stability <laughs> right there is power in that there is power in more of a grounded sense of being and abundance right it doesn't mean like because i think a lot of the times because of that scorpio edge we can think that things that are lighter are more superficial and lack depth right but that's not always the case and we begin to see the beauty and the freedom that is available to us in the earthliness in the abundance in the groundedness right and we also have the spirit of the tower here, surprises, shifts, big changes, right? So there definitely are a lot of shifts coming this month. And what I see here, Scorpio, is that you are seeing what is possible for you. We have the Empress and the Seven of Cups. You are seeing the type of love that you really want in your life, the type of relationships and connections you really want in your life. You are seeing the type of relationship that you want with yourself. You are seeing the beauty in things you are seeing what you are dreaming of rather than all of the destruction all of the chaos all of the you know things that are lacking right the problem is is that these dreams that you see and feeling that confidence that power within yourself to create them to make them a reality is possible but the what we have to walk through is this nine of wands so this nine of wands are our limits our beliefs our blockages the walls that we've created right the walls that we've created where we're putting too much pressure where we're putting too much force where we're too guarded where we are not receptive right where we are not receptive, where we need to lean back a little bit in terms of what we want. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's love or a relationship, 
or acknowledgement, recognition, you know, something to do with other people, helping other people. And I feel like this month is going to show you what is blocking you or what is what you're still holding on to that needs to go for this to come in, right? So this month is showing you where you are still blocking off the desires that you want, the love that you want, the relationship that you want, the dreams that you want, the career that you want, the abundance that you want, whatever it is, the success that you want. This month is coming in and it's showing you where there is a block to that. And it may show you in certain big shifts that you need to make or certain things that kind of, you know, need to be shed, need to be purged for you to move on. So this month is a shift in you, Scorpio. It's a shift in how you go about things. It's it's lessons that are coming in that completely send you through a metamorphosis of self where you come out of October and you come out of November like not even the same person that you were. You come in way more in tune intuitively. So it's so important that you trust in the unseen this month with the high priestess here. That you trust in your feelings. And then not only that, but we have the emperor. Trust in your feelings of the success that you want. Be the CEO of your own life. That's what this is. Trust in the feelings of the relationship that you want. Trust in the feelings of the success that you want. And this will show you who you truly are underneath it all, Scorpio, but also your potential. Also, where you may need to hire your, your hire your standards, you know, like where are you still, where are you still doing things or feeding into things that are not really helpful, you know, that end up kind of subconsciously uh, chipping away at your self worth, your value, etc. Right? Venus is going to be moving into your sign. Uh, on the 23rd, and so from there, there's definitely going to be, and the solar eclipse is right on Venus, so this is your self-worth, this is your self-value, this is your relationship with yourself, with the Empress here, this is how you treat yourself, and having that love and respect and admiration for yourself ends up rippling and it ends up like others can feel that and that ends up attracting the right matches the right people into your life the right relationships into your life seventh house boom some of you you know are really thinking about what it is that you truly want in terms of a relationship what it is that you truly value in terms of a relationship, what it is that you truly need, what's going to help you feel stable and safe in a relationship, and what do you actually value in other people. And also, again, Neptune here, dreams, what you're dreaming of is possible. It's a matter of your trust and your determination and exposing the walls that you have against it. So this month, like I said, is a void where a seed is planted and that seed is going to ripple throughout the next six months of you creating a new you and a new life and attracting what you truly want shaking things up, no longer settling, right? No longer settling, making big changes. So 
I'm excited for you, Scorpio. Let me know down below if this reading ends up resonating with you this month. Come back to it if you need to, if you feel like you're kind of struggling at all. I would love to hear about your experiences. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you are interested in more from me, you can follow me on my Patreon uh, where I post exclusive content weekly. I do readings. I post a lot on my social medias. I have classes, courses you know, programs, all kinds of things going on. Uh, so definitely just check the description below to find out more. And I will uh, see you guys in my next one. Bye. Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your October 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and talk about what is coming up this month for you. So this month of October is a very interesting month. It's going to start off with you feeling possibly very social, making a lot of different connections and maybe even harmonizing different connections, harmonizing different groups of people, being in a lot of different kinds of, you know, possibly social events, social activities, and really like possibly networking, marketing, things like that could be coming up in the beginning of October as you are really in this social energy of Libra in your 11th house. And then on top of that, as we get a little bit farther into the month, around the 23rd, we then get into Scorpio season. And this is where the vibe can shift for you, Sag. And this is really what I wanna talk about for this month because it's a big deal. And this month, when we shift into Scorpio season around the 23rd, not long after, we are also going to have a solar eclipse in Scorpio. And this is going to be a very karmic and faded event. It's going to bring a lot to the surface that maybe you were unaware of, and it's going to create some kind of new seed that is being planted in terms of something that has been going on behind the scenes that maybe you've been attached to in some way. Okay, so this can definitely be, you know, something that you've been kind of, you know, avoiding almost, or that's been kind of going on in the background, right? Because this is happening in your 12th house, which is, you know, where things are somewhat hidden, things are somewhat behind the scenes, like past patterns, past cycles, you know, karmic cycles. It's kind of where we come undone in a lot of ways because we see that there are things that maybe we haven't been accepting or there are things that we've been attached to or there are certain self-sabotaging behaviors that need to go, that need to be cleaned, cleaned out, right? So like I said, the first part of this month is pretty chill, right? And this Libra energy where you are really, you know, possibly feeling very poetic in your connections with other people, wanting to really express your ideas to other people and communicate your ideas to other people in the world. This sense of balance or maybe justice could definitely be coming through. We have spirit of the scales coming out for you, karma, justice, balance. So it does seem like you are maybe focused on trying to rebalance something or trying to make something right in some kind of way, right? So that could definitely be coming through. And you could also be feeling a, a, a pretty large sense of creativity, especially around that Aries full moon. We have passion, creativity, spark, as we have this spirit of fire card here. And so that Aries full moon around the ninth could definitely bring um, a lot of inspiration to the mix. So like I said, the first part of this month, you're really expressing new ideas, you know, putting your ideas out there, connecting with others, making different connections, and then we get to the end of this month where things start to shift, right? We have the spirit of light, awakening, new dawn, beginnings, right? So I feel like this Scorpio solar eclipse in your 12th house is really showing you, it's like an awakening to something you haven't seen before, right? Which is kind of what an awakening is anyway, duh. But, you know, it's something that, it's something that has been, possibly kind of there the whole time, 
but you didn't know it was there or you weren't all the way aware that it was there to some extent. And a lot of this could have to do with your relationships and behind the scenes or subconscious attachments, subconscious patterns, self-sabotaging patterns to do with relationships as Mars is going through your seventh house and going to retrograde at the very end of October as well. And your first tarot card here is the two of cups reversed. And so I really think that you could be really reconsidering certain relationships and connections in your life uh, in October, Sagittarius. I think that you're really kind of reconsidering what is best for you and what's truly worth it for you, what you truly value, because this Scorpio solar eclipse is really showing us what needs to be shed, what needs to be purged, what needs to be let go of and released in order for us to get to more of a sense of stability and security and abundance within our lives with the Taurus North Node that's moving through your sixth house of your your work, your job, your day-to-day -day routines and tasks and, you know, your, your physical health and things like that. So I think that, you know, this Scorpio energy is definitely going to bring up what's going on behind the scenes that is possibly blocking your success in your work, in your day-to-day -day life, and also, and also with your relationships, you know? So there's definitely a lot coming up here, and I think it's like you're, you may have to release or let go of some old ideas, some old attachments, some old values that are no longer serving you, and that are no longer serving the life that you want, that are no longer serving uh, the things that you want to have in your life, right? But at the same time, yes, this Scorpio solar eclipse in your 12th house can bring up this sense of mystery and this sense of what's going on behind the scenes, what sense, uh, this sense of really feeling the things that you've been repressing, right? And to release these things that you've been repressing, you need to feel them, right? You need to heal them. We actually have Chiron coming up here, which is really interesting because this full moon in Aries is actually going to uh, be on Chiron and Aries is ruled by Mars, which is in your seventh house and which rules the Scorpio solar eclipse coming at the end of the month. So if you wanna get back into a flow, this is the energy to do it. Yes, it may bring up some things that you've been, you know, kind of repressing. Yes, it may bring up some some things that can feel disturbing or feel a little bit, you know, like shameful or whatever the case may be, you know, kind of vicious cycles, vicious circles, you know, possibly even, you know, traumas that need to be healed, right? But to get back into that flow, to get to a place of growth, to be able to create what you want in your life and to have the lifestyle you want, you need to be able to heal, right? And that's really what the end of October is going to be about for you. It's going to show you what needs to be released and purged for you to step in to this new version of you right because then we have your season and this is where you get to create this new version of you this is where this new this rebirth happens and you get to move forward with a sense of dedication with a sense of confidence with a sense of fire with a sense of you know knowing what you want and initiating what you want right and so if you've been kind of avoiding things especially financially or especially when it comes to insecurities that you have uh, that deal with either finances career success work possessions anything earthly anything material if you've been kind of avoiding these things this is a month where you may need to face these things, right? We also have the world card, Sag, and this is huge, huge, because this means, yes, there is an awakening happen, and yes, there is a full cycle repeating it, or I'm sorry, not repeating itself, closing itself. <laughs> no more repeats, right? No more repeats. That's like which should be like your mantra for the month, right? We don't want to repeat this again. So we need to face this, right? We don't want to repeat this again. So we need to face this. We need to own our inner power, own what we deserve, own our worthiness with the Empress here and truly decide 
that we are going for it. And to do that, we need to face these things that we don't feel too great about from our past or that are holding us back or certain karmic cycles. This is a very karmic month, especially for you, Sag. I mean, it's a karmic month for everybody, but especially for you because of where this is happening in your chart, in your 12th house, right? You are releasing internal things, right? You are releasing things that go beyond just this realm. And that's why this is crucial because you are coming to a completion. You are coming to a full circle. You are literally awakening and rising the above, you know, these old patterns, these old things that have been holding you back. You're healing them so you can move on. You know, you're really seeing where you may have these subconscious things that have been like blocking your success or that have been that have been kind of self-sabotaging, like these self-sabotaging patterns where you're getting in your own way, right? And this is definitely, definitely, definitely coming up so you can clear this, right? And I also feel like there may be some financial things coming up, investments, things like that. We have the eighth house here and we have two pinnacle cards here. So there could definitely be some financial things that are kind of, you know, coming up as well where you are getting those straight to, where you are clearing out what no longer works in those areas uh, and where you, you know, you may be even looking at certain financial matters where you share resources with someone else or where you, you know, share finances with someone else where there is, you know, a, a, give, a give and take going on, right? A giving and receiving going on that needs to be rebalanced in terms of your financial situation, right? Uh, and maybe you have some options here that you're considering, right? I kind of see a lot of reflection and reconsideration happening this month for you, Sag. So that is what I'm seeing for the month of October, Sagittarius. Let me know down below if this reading resonated with you and landed with you and what you do feel is coming for you in the month of October or what you are noticing if you are if we are already in October by the time you're watching this if you would like to uh, hang out with me every week and get astrology reports on a day-to-day -day basis make sure to join my patreon down below where I have exclusive content I do weekly horoscopes and then also I have programs uh, I have an astrology course, I have classes, I have all kinds of different other things that I do. I offer readings. All of that is linked down below. Make sure to follow me on my socials as well to keep up with me. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Capricorn, welcome to your October 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. Let's go ahead and get into it. So if you are a Capricorn rising, I really don't feel October is going to be as game changing for you as it could be for some of the other signs okay and you know this probably is a good thing right like we have this eclipse happening in your 11th house uh which is a lighter house it's a little bit more social and you know it's not so deep personal and intense uh but it could feel that way in terms of some of your connections some of your social life some of your relationships so you could notice those themes uh, in your connections, especially towards the end of the month. But as we start off the month of October, you're really going to be kind of focused on your career, your long-term goals, where you're headed, you know, what's going on in your professional life, and do you need to collaborate with people, you know, what's going on with your professional relationships, your professional connections, like these are going to be the big themes of October, and you're really going to be kind of weighing out or trying to find some balance in terms of your professional life, in terms of your career, in terms of your future long-term goals and your achievements and where you want to go, you know, and and so I feel like one of the key words this month for you, Capricorn, is status, right? Who do you want to be? Where do you want to go in the world? What do you want to accomplish? And those are the things that definitely could be coming to light, especially if you've been feeling... If you've been feeling a little bit like cock blocked with your creativity recently, then these are definitely some things that could come up. So we have the spirit of Gaia, which is very much about creation and Mother Earth and family, you know, and then we have the spirit of stone, which causes delays and kind of this freezing or longing effect. And so I definitely think that 
you are yearning for bigger things, right? You're yearning for success in new ways. And you're also possibly feeling like maybe there's like a standstill in your life a little bit, you know, like maybe there's been something that's been going on where you've just been feeling like stuck in the mud or you've been kind of dragging your feet and your ruling planet Saturn has been retrograde, you know, and it's going direct this month too, which is good around, around the 23rd. So that's good, but you may have been feeling a little bit at a standstill, you know, and this month is going to bring that forward momentum in terms of what you want for your future, right? Because you're not just working for you. You're not just focusing on your future. You're also focusing on the future that you want to give other people, right? I think a lot of Capricorn Risings can feel that way with Libra being your 10th house. It's like, I don't want to just do this for me. I want to do this to you know, bring something to other people in some way. And it can feel very frustrating at times, right? There can be uh, some competition going on or some, you know, with that Aries full moon in your fourth, this could even bring up, you know, some conflict, a little bit of conflict in the family as well that could be happening where you kind of feel maybe set back in terms of, you know, your family, your roots, your foundation. But I think you're going to be able to work through that if that is the case. And Capricorn, I also see you really finding some kind of companion or some kind of friendship maybe in terms of your professional life or something, you know, there's just someone I feel like really is bringing more balance to your life and to your world. We have the spirit of the dog here, which deals with loyalty, companion, friendship. So I feel like that can really be helpful uh, if that if that message resonates with you, if you're finding someone like that in your life, someone that really understands, right? And can kind of bring like a sense of balance. We also have the feminine spirit card. And so I feel like if there is some pressure right now, Capricorn, if you're feeling that longing, frozen, delayed energy, if you're feeling like there are some, there's been some setbacks in terms of your professional life or your career, Mercury was retrograding in your career house. So that would make sense. If you're feeling like there's just some uproar or conflict or pressure in any way, the biggest thing to do is to lean back right now. You need to get back into a receptive place, right? Because the more that you put pressure on it, the more that you're going to cock block your creativity, the more you're going to like block your inspiration, the more you're going to block the things that you actually want to be doing. Like you're going to get in the way of your own desires, basically, right? You're, it's going to be counterintuitive. And so I think it would be very, very good for you to tap more into a receptive energy, to tap more into an intuitive energy and get back into things that feel good to you, right? This nine of cups is like, dude, he's chilling, right? Like he's chilling, he's leaned back, he's comfortable, he's got it, right? And so we need to get like out of this energy and into this energy, right? Leave the petty arguments and BS at the door right? Like leave that at the door. Libra is about being classy. So where do we need to adopt some of that classiness and how is that going to get us farther? Because when we are in this energy of pressure and frustration and aggravation, it feels like nothing's working and everything that we're doing and doing and doing is not getting us anywhere. It can just feel exhausting. And so we're going to have a major shift just by leaning back and not reacting right? So this is kind of like an energy of like not being super reactive to every little thing this month. And that is how you end up being a rock star. That is how you end up catching people's attention. That is how you end up being someone that people looks up to. And that is how you end up literally completing a massive cycle, right? So we also have the six of cups here. We have the six of wands here. So I feel like you are really like try on being over your past. I think you're really putting, you're really in situ social situations or diplomatic situations this month. And even, you know, it may not be you in these conflicts, Capricorn, you could be maybe the one that's like helping people through conflicts this month. Maybe you're the mediator, right? Like it really looks like you're playing somewhat of a diplomat this month in your career, your professional life, possibly in your social life. You know, there, there's definitely some diplomatic kind of qualities that you are that you are taking on here and so 
Uh, we also have the Four of Swords, which is interesting, coming after the Six of Pentacles. So this month is, it's weird. It's like, slow down and enjoy what you're doing, right? Slow down and enjoy what you're doing. Get back in touch with your bigger vision. Don't be afraid to kind of get into that, like, you know, feminine energy of just like, you know, slowing down, being more receptive, you know, being more nurturing, right? Um, that is where you're going to find your wins. That is where you're going to find your success. That's where you're going to find more balance and harmony. Um, and that's where you're going to find more peace, right? <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Uh, I, I think that you know, this could definitely be coming from, you know, Mercury opposing Neptune in the beginning of the month. This could also be co coming from, you know, the placements moving through Libra, uh, opposing Jupiter and Aries. You know, there's just, I think, a lot of different things this can be coming from. So we also have the fourth house roots. Like I said, that Aries full moon could definitely bring up some tension in the home life or with the family that needs to be worked through, right? But it's actually an opportunity in some way, right? And you may not see that at first. So it's an opportunity that leads to more passion, that leads to more of what you love, right? And so that's definitely something happening here. But this is really interesting, Capricorn. Um, and then we also have Mars going retrograde in your sixth house of work. So there's definitely a lot of productivity that you can find, but you find it by moving with the flow rather than trying to hammer it in there right rather than trying to put pressure on it like you're gonna find it with flowing through it and doing it because you want to do it not just because like you know you feel really pressured to do it right and so it's like really getting back in touch with what really inspires you like what's your bigger vision what do you want to do what difference do you want to make right and using that you know in this these virgo transits may have showed you that it may have showed you where you want to serve more where you want to help more people where you want to you know bring something more to people and help them through different things and so it's going to be really an interesting month capricorn i think that the solar eclipse coming in your 11th house of friends and acquaintances and social your social life can definitely bring up some really powerful acquaintances influences uh, you know, social connections, uh, and can also be a time where you're really changing your vibe, changing the people that you want to interact with, you know, so it just kind of depends. So let me know down below if this reading uh, resonates with you or if you feel like it's going to resonate with you. Um, and let me know what you do feel, you know, what you do see come up this month, Capricorn. I'd really love to hear your feedback and hear your experiences as always, and it would help my little channel out over here so i would really appreciate it if you would like to get a astrological uh rundown with me weekly as i go over each day the astrology of each day over on my patreon plus more exclusive content then definitely make sure to follow me on patreon below and also i do readings i have courses i have programs so if that's something that you're interested in then definitely see the description below. I hope you guys have an amazing October and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hello Aquarius. So welcome to your October 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. So October is a big freaking deal. It's a huge, huge, huge month ahead that we are having. And the first, like the first biggest part of the month up until like around like the 23rd is going to be totally different than the last part of the month, right? So the first part of the month is chill vibes. You know, it's your ninth house. You are maybe feeling a lot more inspired. You are maybe feeling, you know, a lot more in touch with learning endeavors, educational pursuits, your belief systems, maybe traveling or whatever, whatever your inspiration is, you know, like whatever inspires you you are maybe feeling a little bit more tapped into uh you know a sense of social diplomacy or uh you know different social events that are occurring maybe themes of justice or fairness in the world uh you know things like this you're you're definitely tapping into your higher belief systems right the things that maybe you want to learn about or the things that you're interested in 
education, etc. But as we get to the end of October, we're really changing and shifting into a more scorpionic energy, which is your 10th house of your career, your professional life, where you want to go in your life, you know, your direction in your life, what you want to achieve in your life and your reputation, you know, and so basically where you feel powerful in the world and what you want to do with that, right? And so I think that on a month like this, you're really going to be kind of led into this energy of seeing where and what you're attached to that's really holding you back from the life or career or profession that you want. And so this could be a really like massive starting point in terms of your career and professional life. So what I mean by that is a solar eclipse is basically a new moon on steroids, right? It's a new moon that's like amplified. And this new moon, a new moon is always kind of a, a seed that's being planted because a new moon can't really be, um, can't really be seen. It's basically like, it's basically dark, right? And so it's kind of like a blackout. And so there's a void that happens where a seed of creation is being planted. And so this seed for you is going to ripple into your bigger life goals, your bigger life lessons, what you are learning in this life and where you want to go in this life, what you're doing in this life and how like your place in the world, what you want to be in terms of the world at large, your big long term goals, right? And this is why it includes career and your professional life, right? So with that being said, you know, you're going to have this ripple effect in terms of, you know, what am I really holding on to that's preventing me from really, you know, showing myself, really being seen, uh, really doing what I want to do in terms of career, what insecurities or attachments do I have, what feelings of lack do I have around, you know, really putting myself out there and following my long-term goals, what am I afraid of, what fears do I have in terms of my long-term goals and, and in terms of, you know, long-term success, and you're going to be... This is really, really interesting. Ma ha ha ha. <laughs> You're going to be very tempted to cut out the bullshit and to expose yourself and possibly even expose your, your vulnerabilities. Now, what do I mean by this? Okay. There is something here. Aquarius, that is holding you back. We have the Spirit of Possession card. So this can be incubus, succubus, sexual obsession, etc. So I don't take this as like literal, like, oh my God, you know, you need like a, a priest and holy water and all that. But I, I don't take this as literal. I take this as more so, you know, well, okay, what is possession, right? It is kind of being controlled or overpowered by something that you're in conflict with, right? We all do that, right? Our minds tell us crazy shit on the daily. You know, we have old subconscious beliefs that literally drive us on the daily, right? So with that being said, I think you are going to see what old subconscious shit or what like old feelings, old attachments, old insecurities are overpowering you to where you're not moving forward with the kind of life that you want, where you're holding yourself back, keeping yourself from the life that you want and not really doing anything about it, right? And so, and, there, and it could be because honestly, maybe you have some shame Maybe you have some guilt. We also have the devil card. <laughs> I know, like just coincidentally, devil in possession. Don't get scared, okay? I really like, you're, you're okay. But what's gonna set you free from this is the truth. The truth. Because the truth sets you free. When 
we have insecurities, when we have certain things, whether it be shame, guilt, whatever the case may be, deep down within us, those things have power because we are giving them power. You are the one with the power and we choose to attach to these things and allow them to be true instead of realizing that they're false. So, and I mean, you could kind of say the same thing with the whole ideology of these things, right? The more that you attach truth to something, the more you give it power, right? The more you say, I'm, you know, I'm shameful, I'm a shameful person, and this, that, and the other. And a lot of the times this holds power because we keep it in. We keep it a secret, right? And so I really think that the at the end of October, Aquarius, you could find yourself exposing certain secrets to shake things up in a way that's going to inspire others. And it's almost like I'm going to expose myself before someone else exposes me. Or, you know, even if it's not anything like that for you, it could also just be like, I'm going to face this, these insecurities, this shame, so it doesn't have control over me anymore. And it's, that's actually exactly what we've been doing inside of my, my program Phoenix this month. Uh, so I really feel like Aquarius, there is something here that you need to expose because the reason it has power is because you're keeping it in and you're like attaching to it. You are letting it have the power that it does. So I really see you guys possibly exposing something this month. We also interestingly have the spirit of the crystal ball, which is about predictions, the future, divination, we also have the spirit of wind, activity, movement, disruption. Wind is air, air is swords, the truth. If you want to get things moving, if you feel like you're stuck at all this month, the power of the truth is going to set you free. There's just such a large theme here with truth. And if, you, if you're already understanding this and know what it means, definitely let me know down below because I'd love to uh, hear what you guys have to say about this but you know i really feel like you're thinking long term and you're seeing what is holding you back that you can no longer attach to anymore and through that you end up triumphing by cutting it off you cut it off at the knees by literally facing the truth and facing it, right? Like you, that's how you do it and exposing it and not letting it have power over you. I really, really, truly, truly believe that. And we even have the King of Swords here. So it's like when you truly embody and own this truth, you take the power back. You take the power away from it and it can no longer control you. And you end up shaking things up and you end up moving forward from there, right? And I even just drew the Three of Wands, the Page of Swords, and the Tower, right? So owning your truth, speaking your truth, shakes things up. Going into it with a curiosity rather than this like, oh my gosh, you know, like this fear is going to be so helpful because here's the thing whatever in your life is not feeling stable it's because it wasn't stable to begin with that just kind of wanted to come through it's because it wasn't stable to begin with and so i feel like you know even if it's just through journaling whatever it is, talking to yourself, you know, like having your own conversation with yourself. But I do feel like there's this energy here of like 
really exposing exposing the darkness that's holding you back for some of you this could be like i don't know you know maybe you're maybe you're exposing like darkness in the world but either way you're trying to own your truth right you're trying to own your truth and you're moving into you know, some of, for some of you, this could be kind of like an investigation thing because we do have Virgo and Scorpio coming up in the eighth house. So for some of you, this could be like maybe you're learning or investigating something that you're like coming out with or something. I'm just trying to see what else this could be. But I feel like, you know, there's this energy of feeling held back for so long of feeling held back for so long and you obsessing about these things, these darker areas, whether they're within you or others is not good if that's what you're doing, right? It's not getting you anywhere. It's not healthy for you. And so for some of you, there may be unhealthy habits. You know, this could be unhealthy habits that you need to cut out. It's going to be kind of different for different ones of you, but you're also really learning how to own your power in a very public way, right? In a way that like does kind of expose you, but you are in your power, right? So that is what I'm seeing for you, Aquarius. Kind of like a different reading here, I know. Um, but yeah, interesting. Nonetheless, let me know if this ends up resonating for you or if you feel like this will end up resonating for you. If you know what I'm talking about, I would definitely love to hear your feedback down below. Uh, your ruling planet Saturn will go direct this month on the 23rd. So that will definitely also get some momentum moving for you. And then, yeah, we also have Mars going retrograde at the very end of the month on the 30th. And it's going retrograde in your fifth house of dating, romance, creativity, and, you know, uh, you know, anything that you do for fun, anything that you do that, you know, feels lighthearted and fun and, you know, that brings pleasure into your life. And so, yeah, you may be reflecting on different things that do that, you know, how to kind of bring more of that into your life. So anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. If you would like to get more from me, see my description below. I have a Patreon where I post weekly uh, content. I also have my social medias you can follow me on. And then I also do readings. I have programs, classes, etc. So see everything down below. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Hello Pisces and welcome to your October 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing wonderful. Let's go ahead and get into your reading Pisces. So this month is a pretty big deal. Luckily though you are one of the signs that you know this may not be as turbulent for in some ways just because the big deal that's happening this month is eclipse season and these eclipses are happening in your third and ninth houses which are cadent houses so they're not really as intense or life-altering as some of the other houses which is good you know because you never know right like you know i mean it, not every eclipse is like uh you know a, a bad life change or anything but certainly uh, you know, it's it's better to be safe than, you know, whatever <laughs> in this situation. So uh, with October, though, Pisces, you really start off this month in a focus of finances, right? There's a lot of financial focus that's happening. There could be a lot of focus on partnership, relationships, and, you know, what is fair and equal in terms of what you give and receive in your relationships and your relationship dynamics, what you share between each other, what, you know, uh, what, what you owe to other people, what other people owe to you. So you could be really in this energy of trying to balance 
your finances, right? So that's kind of the obvious that you're really stepping into this month. Now, as we move throughout the month, you know, you'll get a little bit more focused on your own financial priorities, your own financial uh, obligations, and a little bit less focused on other people's money or shared resources and money and investments, right? And so, and that's gonna happen with this Aries full moon coming right around the 9th. And then after that is where we really get start getting into this Scorpio energy around the 23rd as Venus and the Sun move into Scorpio. And then on the 25th, we have the Scorpio solar eclipse happening, which is going to happen in your ninth house of travel, education, you know, the higher purpose and meaning of things. And, you know, different educational pursuits, your belief systems, justice, you know, uh, legalities, things like this. And so it's going to be an interesting time, you know, like you definitely could be going through a shift around that time or start going through a shift around that time where you begin to really start having new ideas about how you see the world or new perspectives on how you see the world and your long-term or bigger you know, beliefs in terms of, you know, what you think about religion or politics or worldviews or what it is that you want or what gives you meaning in the world, you know? So these kind of bigger, bigger life questions could definitely be coming up around this eclipse. There could also be a sense of, you know, fear or beliefs that are kind of driven from fear that come up that you may need to face in order for you to be able to kind of set this new stage for new beliefs that are more healthy or that feel more aligned in your day-to-day -day life. So, you know, your ninth house is kind of like your long-term or bigger, you know, higher-minded uh, belief systems and thoughts, you know, ones that include the world and the meanings of life and, you know, these bigger kind of questions, whereas your third house is more of like right here, right now, what you think on a day-to-day -day basis, the more mundane, you know, kind of closer to home thoughts and opinions that you carry, right? So there's going to be this dynamic between the two, right? So let's get into your cards here. We have the spirit of the clover, abundance, luck coming up here. We have the spirit of the scales, karma, justice, and balance. So like I said, we're really starting off where you are getting your finances in check. You are whipping your finances into shape. You are really weighing things out and balancing out and balancing things out in terms of your investments, your money, where your money is going, who you share your money with, where you get your money from, uh, who you give your money to. All of these different things are really coming up here and you're really trying to find that middle ground and what's fair, you know, and, and what feels just to you in terms of money and abundance in your life. We also have the spirit of travel coming up here, if I could get it. So journey, relocation, moving on. And that's really coming in, like I said, with this scorpionic energy. The ninth house is the house of travel. So you may feel pulled, like I need to go on a journey or there's something I need to discover or, you know, I you may need to relocate or, you know, something along those lines. So that could definitely come up as well. And we also have the spirit of the swans. So for some of you, this could be relocating for love or relocating uh, for a relationship in some way. And for others of you, you know, this Libran energy is very much kind of this energy, grace, elegance, poise. So just really like carrying yourself in a way of elegance and grace. And, you know, you could be feeling those kind of Libran vibes this month, like classy, elegant, graceful, all of the things, right? So, and for some of you, this could be somewhat of a lesson, you know, maybe you're going to be tempted to have a bit of a conflict, you know, or kind of breach uh, your integrity in some way. And so this could be some kind of lesson to carry yourself in an elegant manner, uh, in a way of grace. So we also have the hermit coming up here and the five of swords. So Pisces, I really see you. I really see you. It's kind of like you're trying to get away in some in some manner i feel here i feel you're trying to get away in some manner you're trying to 
maybe find yourself or uh, seclude yourself in some way. And you're having trouble doing that for some reason. And because maybe you feel like, oh, well, maybe you're a little bit concerned with the opinions of others. But I don't think that, I think what you're not possibly seeing is that with this Five of Swords here, it's usually a lose-lose situation, right? Where you're kind of like, yeah, the guy backstabs the other guy, but it ends up like, yeah, now you have to live with that guilt. And I think that's what you're really kind of weighing out here. It's like, maybe you're trying to make a decision, but you're like, can I live with the guilt? Can I live with knowing that I did that? And is it the most humble thing to do, you know, like th there's, it's interesting, these two cards are very kind of, they're kind of very contrasted, like there's this breach of integrity and then there's this kind of humility, and so I think that <laughs> honestly, it for to me, it's like what is the bigger burden to you to carry? And I think you're trying to, you're investigating that, you're researching that, you're reflecting on that, you're trying to figure that out. What burden do you, are you okay with carrying? And what burden are you not okay with carrying? And what past burdens are you carrying? I really feel here, Pisces, that some of you are being called to possibly relocate or move on from a situation at the very least, or maybe, you know, get away from a situation, leave something behind, but a part of you feels like, am I betraying someone by doing that? Am I, you know, letting someone down by doing that? And I think that what it's really going to come down to, Pisces, is... Someone is not really seeing your worth and you may not be seeing your worth or your value and you have so much value to add. And it may be difficult to see that because of maybe where you're at or, you know, a label or something, but I feel like you have a lot more value to add. This is getting kind of specific, so I do apologize if not all of you relate to this, but you never know. You might come back in October and things may change, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but I also feel like you have to protect your own energy, right? We have the Nine of Wands and the High Priestess. You have to protect your own energy, your own, your own spirit. And I feel like you're determined to discover the mysteries of something. You're determined to reveal something. You're determined to... <clears throat> see behind the curtain, so to speak, right? And you're also determined to protect your own, your own sacredness or your own sense of, like your own spiritual connection in some way. Like that, I think, is the jackpot to you with the King of Pentacles here. That's what I think is the most valuable to you if you're considering, you know, what's most valuable to you. So that's really what I'm seeing here so far, Pisces, it's really interesting. I think you're really going to see this month what really is important to you, what's really sacred to you, and what you're really made of and what you're really capable of, like your value right? Like the value that you have. We have opposition here. Like I said, it definitely seems like you're you're balancing two different things out. You're really considering two different options that are very opposite of each other. We also have the first house of self. So it's really getting into what's the best for you, finding you in this, like really understanding what's, you know, like wh what you want and what's going to be like really putting yourself first, right? Making yourself the priority here. And then we have the 10th house of reputation, and, you know, your long-term achievements, your long-term goals, what, like, what feels purposeful for you, right? And so that's really, you know, crucial for you as well. And that's really coming up here too. And so 
that is what I'm seeing here for you Pisces. Hopefully this resonated. I know it got a little specific at times, but just let me know down below if this was your reading and if any of it resonated with you and what you are seeing come up in your life or if you could feel like this definitely will resonate with you as we get into October a little bit more. Like I said, you can come back if you find that it doesn't resonate with you right off the bat uh, or you can watch your other signs for now and see if they resonate more. And yeah, if you would like to come hang out with me every week as I go over the astrology for the week ahead day by day and then also get exclusive content from me make sure to sign up for my patreon you can sign up for as little as five dollars per month down below I also have personal readings classes programs courses everything down below if you are interested and uh, follow me on social media as well if you're interested thank you so so much for watching Pisces I will see you guys in the next one bye Alrighty, Aries, welcome to your October 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. We have a crazy month coming up in October, so buckle up. <laughs> the first part of the month is going to be pretty chill for the most part. Relationships are really in focus right now for you, Aries, where you're really, you know, relationships, balance, how you relate to others, how they relate to you who you are in relationships versus who you are when you're, you know, on your own, like who you are just as a person outside of your relationships, right? Your relationship dynamics and, you know, how other people see you and other people mirroring back qualities that you have within you and, you know, all of this mirroring and relational stuff happening here for you uh, right now as we're moving into October. And so you could definitely find that relationships are a huge, huge focus in your life right now, Aries. And so that's kind of how we start the month. You know, uh, we really start the month with a lot of that seventh house energy and a lot of the air signs being activated. You know, we have your ruling planet Mars and Gemini, which is your third house to get this card. And Saturn moving direct uh, later in the month on the 23rd and Aquarius, your 11th house. So there's a lot of social aspects happening in your chart, if you're in Aries rising at least right now, where there's a lot of social situations happening, a lot of, you know, communicating and busyness, you know, maybe you're getting a lot more emails than usual. Maybe your people are messaging you, texting you, calling you, you know, there's just a busyness or more of a sense of, you know, uh, communications and, and whatever in your social life right now, basically. So that's kind of how we start the month, you know, the chill Libra and energy, and it can feel a little bit uncomfortable because it is your opposite sign. So you're like, wait, I gotta, I gotta consider other people first, you know, like you may feel like you're being a little bit, like people are getting on you a little bit more about being considerate or getting on you a little bit more about like thinking about other people and what other people think and what other people want, other people's opinions, you know? And so it could feel a little bit like, whoa, you know? Um, usually around seventh house transits for signs, it can feel like we lose ourselves a little bit or like we, uh, you know, where you're you're in the opposite energy of you. So it's feeling a little bit like, okay, wait, this is out of my nature, right? And so you can kind of feel that way uh, as an Aries rising, especially moving into Libra season. Uh, but the big stuff is really happening later in the month, pretty late in the month. So right around when we get to Scorpio season on the 23rd, we are gonna have a solar eclipse on the 25th. And we will also have your ruling planet Mars retrograding in Gemini. And this is a pretty big deal, okay? <laughs> pretty big deal, all a pretty big deal. We'll also have Jupiter moving back into Pisces in your 12th house. So a lot of water is going to get reactivated in your chart. <clears throat> and you have Scorpio uh, specifically in your 8th house of finances, other people's money and resources and where you share those finances and resources with other people or have contracts, commitments, etc. you know, debts, anything like that comes up here in the eighth house. Where are your attachments? You know, where do you have these attachments to maybe things of lack, you know, like certain lack in your life or insecurities in your life? 
uh, surrounding wealth, money, and finances, and power even as well, and power dynamics. So these are the things that you could definitely see coming up uh, towards the end of the month in October. And then with Jupiter moving back into your 12th house, there could also be a lot of topics of healing being reactivated. Jupiter was just here at the beginning of this year, the first like, you know, four and a half months of this year. And so you were really feeling that Jupiter and Pisces energy then, and it was very much about healing and releasing and letting go, right? And so that's going to be reactivated as you integrate those lessons that you learned in the beginning of the year once Jupiter moves back in, into Pisces on the 28th of this month. So with that being said, a lot going on. Like I said, this month is a big deal. So with your cards, <clears throat> Aries, I really see here that you have been really focusing on your bigger visions, your bigger dreams, right? And what you really want out of life, right? And I feel like this month you are getting back in touch with your intuition as we have the spirit of the moon here and getting back in touch with the cycles of life. And I also feel like Jupiter moving into your 12th at the end of the month is really gonna do that as well. And plus we're gonna have a full moon in your sign this month. And that full moon in your sign around the 9th is going to be like a refreshing energy for you, Aries, because it is gonna feel like, oh, okay, here I am again, right? It's You're gonna feel more of that sense of your true nature again as we have that full moon in your sign. So it will be like a little bit of a break from all this Libra and energy, right? So we also have the spirit of armor, defense, tactical, and guarded. And so this could really be a time where you're kind of needing to lower that armor, right? You're kind of needing to, to lower that armor because it's not really helping anymore because after that we have control, emptiness, and submissive. And so the armor might be there because you kind of have this view of like, oh, well, if I lower my armor, then I'll just be submissive or I'll be weak or I'll be defenseless or other people will be able to control me. And that's really not the case. You know, Jupiter's moving out of your sign and back into Pisces in your 12. So this is a big shift. This is a shift from like, I'm ready to armor up. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to initiate. Like, let's do this to, uh, hold on, wait, let's lean back. Let's slow down. Uh, let's, you know, kind of get back into a feminine energy flow rather than this, like, let's go kind of energy, right? And so this can be kind of confusing for you. You know, we have like the seven of cups here. So it's like, wait, hold on, what's happening? What's going on? You know, we have the seven of pinnacles here, you know, which deals a lot with like patience and waiting and, you know, slowing down, right? And then we have the Queen of Cups here, which also deals with a lot of those things too, being more receptive. And so it's like, allow yourself to slow down this month, Aries. Allow yourself to take the armor off. You don't have to be so defensive. You don't have to be so guarded. You don't have to be so high on your guard, especially towards the end of this month. Allow yourself to slow down and be receptive. Yes, you may get bored of it at times. Yes, it may not make sense to you at times, but it's not supposed to make sense, right? Pisces energy is not supposed to make sense to you. And so this really is an energy of slowing down, being more open, being more receptive, and allowing things to unfold the way that, you know, the universe or whatever you believe in wants them to. This is also a time where you may come to an awakening, where you may come to a new perspective on things, where your beliefs may change and where you may start seeing things in a whole new way, where you may finally like let go of things that have been holding you back from the past, right? That That's the thing. It's like, you've built this armor because of the past, but now the past is the very thing that is controlling you still. It's the very thing, like you're still being controlled even though you've built this armor to protect yourself against it. It's still controlling you, right? And so you have to let go of that past and face that past, right? For you to move on so it no longer does have some kind of power over you. Right. And so that's the thing by you. The armor is the symbol of you still holding on to the past. Basically. 
and you trying to fight that is only going to make it worse. This game, when Jupiter moves back into Pisces, is about releasing, not about, <laughs> they're just dropping everywhere, not about a fight, not about conflict, not about, you know, uh, putting a bunch of pressure on it. It's like, you know, trying to use uh, a, a hammer to make a sandwich or something, you know, like it's just, it's not very helpful. Right? And so if you want to move forward, you have to, if you want to expand, if you want to reach these visions, these dreams, there's first an energy of embracing the feminine, embracing slowing down, embracing leaning into the mystery, the beauty, the mysteriousness, the trust, right? Not feeling like you have to do it all yourself, change it all yourself, because there is an energy that is going to be supporting you with Jupiter moving into Pisces. There is this energetic support that you're going to have, even though you may not be able to like spot it or put your finger on it, right? So on top of that, you could be making some short trips, uh, especially in terms of a relationship this month. We have the Libra card and the Sag card. So there could be some trips that are happening with a relationship or with another person. We have, you know, like I said, your ruling planet Mars going retrograde in your third house. So you're going to be really reflecting on your knowledge, your ideas, your communication, your environment, you know, uh, the maybe the town you live in, you know, and the environments that you surround yourself with and the people, places and things you surround yourself with are really going to come into focus, possibly even family, siblings, cousins, family members, etc. So these are definitely things that you could see coming up. Now, Mars is also going to rule this Scorpio solar eclipse happening in your eighth house. So this could also be decisions that you're making in terms of your finances, resources, shared resources, etc. in terms of wealth as well you know, and how the, the different ways that you go about making those things, the different options that you have, maybe you're learning new things, you know, things like that. So this is what I am seeing for you, Aries, for the month of October. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated. I would really, really love to hear your feedback and hear what you guys have to say and what does happen for you in the month of October. You know, I'm really interested to know because this is a very very big month and uh if you would like to follow me on patreon and get exclusive content every week you can do that down below also uh, i have i offer readings uh, i have an astrology course and other courses classes programs etc you can check out down below as well thank you guys so so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next one Bye. Woo, Taurus. So welcome to your October 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. October is a big freaking deal. So you definitely want to be catching your horoscope and reading for this month. So the first part of October is pretty chill, right? Not too much going on. I mean, we do have the last and final Saturn Uranus square, which definitely affects you because Uranus is in your sign. And so you're probably feeling that intensity build up again. That's been happening for the last few years of like really needing to break free of like oppressive structures, authority figures, limitations or restrictions that you feel are holding you back or holding you down in terms of your career and your goals, your achievements, etc. Uh, and so that's definitely something that you really can notice. It can feel like, you know, there's not, it may feel like there's like this this feeling of like, I just want to be me. I just want to like be my wild, authentic, unique, quirky self. And it can almost feel like you have to like break, break free or there's this sense of like wanting more freedom, but it can feel like a, a restriction or like a heaviness is weighing on you in some, in some regard, or it can feel like, you know, the conditions of the world are against you or something. And this is something you've really been dealing with for a couple years now, but this is the final square that's, that's coming into its last, you know, aspect. And so this is really tying up this story that's been going on. And so I feel like, you know, this is kind of you finally breaking free of those things or finally 
figuring out what's right for you, you know? And so the first part of October can definitely come with those kinds of, you know, realizations and those those energies of breaking free of something that's felt very oppressive or restrictive or, you know, breaking free of old conditions of the past or old conditioning or breaking free of what society expects of you. I mean, it can be a lot of different things, you know, finally, you know, maybe putting yourself out there or rising above limitations in terms of your job or your career or your professional life. You know, with Saturn moving through your 10th house, I imagine the last couple of years have probably felt very restrictive in terms of your career and your professional life and your long-term goals. It may feel like you've had to work a lot harder and there may have been a lot of inconsistency or you may have felt a little bit inconsistent and a little bit uh, uncertain at times when it comes to what you want. There's been a lot of really big looming you know lifelong questions of like what do I really want to do with my life and and can I really take that on can I really handle that can I really take on that responsibility and take on those those different goals and take on those uh those different things that you actually want in your life and the the different achievements you actually want to achieve in your life you know it's like life can feel like the last couple of years it's gotten very serious for you where you've gotten very serious about what you want in your life and where you may hold yourself back or where you haven't been you know it's like you like instead of life feeling very broad it's likely felt very narrow where you've had to look through this like narrow microscope and see like the reality of your world the reality of your life the reality of your situation where you haven't been living up to your fullest potential and Saturn can really show that it can really kind of harden in ways and show us like okay, here's the reality of your situation. You know, you, you, you know, you haven't been living up to your potential here. And would you be okay? Like if you died now, if, if this was it, you know, like if this is all you achieved and likely the answer is no, you know, but it's like those kinds of realizations, even though they're harsh and even though they're kind of brutal and even though they can be kind of tough, those are the kinds of realizations that actually, launch us into achieving what we really want and launch us into our goals and launch us into what we really want out of life. And so it causes us to work harder at our achievements. It causes us to get more serious about our goals and more serious about our career, more serious about what gives us a sense of purpose <laughs> in the world, you know, and what gives us a sense of strength and having the courage to really go after that sense of purpose, you know? You've had to get really serious about your career and about your life, about your goals, about your limits, about what's going on in terms of your long-term achievements and what you want to achieve in this lifetime, right? And your the legacy that you want to leave behind and how much pressure and responsibility you're willing to take on and, and what kind of things you're able to handle. And so I know it can be kind of uh, a rough way of thinking or a kind of, you know, more, you know, brutal way of thinking. I can't think of the right word right now, but it's caused you to get serious. And from that place you can launch, but with the Uranus square, with Uranus moving through your sign, it may feel like you all also are lacking the freedom or there's maybe this feeling of inconsistency within you or this feeling of like, I want to switch it up. I don't want to be so serious all the time. I want to be able to be like my authentic self. I want to be able to like get out of my comfort zone and try new things and, and really embody this sense of freedom and uniqueness and individuality in what I'm doing. I don't want to just be like everyone else or just do what everyone else is doing or whatever the case may be. And so there's been this back and forth that's really kind of coming to a close finally uh, and coming to its last and final peak right at the beginning of October where I think you're gonna really get a lot of insight on this where you know you've had had to you've had to get more serious in terms of your life you've had to take on a lot more responsibility in terms of your professional life or your career or look at things from a very realistic you know rational point of view in terms of your reputation in terms of your goals your achievements authority Figures, you know, and it can at times feel like the world was weighing on your shoulders. It can at times feel like there's a sense of heaviness or, you know, slowdown or delay or stuckness in terms of your career, but it's also forced you to grow up, to be an adult in this area of your life too, to take on more responsibilities, to see what you are capable of. And that's what's really coming up here is that through the lack, 
through the, you know, kind of brutality of Saturn moving through your 10th house and kind of going over your dreams and going over your, your life and, and getting more serious about your life, you've been able to also see where you're not living up to that potential, where you're not living up to uh, your, your true sense of purpose and where maybe you were just kind of going with the grain, so to say, or just fitting in instead of standing out. And so there's been this kind of, you know, on like, back and forth like battle within you and within your life of like do i want to do me do i want to stand out versus do i want to just fit in and do what everybody else is doing in the world right and so it's been kind of this back and forth energy that you've really had to go through and also you know seeing your career and seeing the direction of your life in a more serious way or taking on more responsibilities or you know seeing you know uh, seeing the limits, seeing the restrictions in the world, seeing where things can feel kind of um, limiting or oppressive in terms of society, the world, your career, your professional life, you know, and seeing where maybe you kind of feel like an outcast in some of those areas of life, but where you can embrace that. And that's actually what helps you stand out, you know, by embracing you feeling a little bit outcasted or feeling a little bit different or whatever, that helps you embrace that, which ends up helping you stand out in the long run, which ends up helping you be someone different that can cause change, that can affect change, that can and make a big change in the world and so that's really what I am getting here for you sorry there's like people outside being loud AF right now uh, so that is basically what I'm seeing here for you in terms of that Saturn Uranus square now as we move on throughout the month we then have this Aries full moon happening in your 12th house so this is going to be a time where you're going to be a little bit more drawn to be secluded to focus on your individual self to focus on individuality to do your own thing right to kind of get out of this collaborative relational energy of your day-to-day -day life your day day-to-day -day task, your day-to-day -day work, whatever, and to get more into like, I need to like do me right now, or I need to go focus on this right now, or I need to like step away, take a break, and just do what feels right for me. And so that's kind of the energy that, you know, we're coming into in the middle of the month for you. And then at the very end of the month is where shit starts popping off as we get into Scorpio season. Very soon, right after that, on the 25th, we will have the Scorpio solar eclipse. And that is definitely bringing in this energy of relationships. This is a big deal because you and Scorpio are very much involved in eclipse season with the nodes in your sign. So Scorpio is your opposite sign. It's your relationship sector if you're a Taurus ascendant. So this is really going to bring up relationships, other people, and your shadow traits, what you may not see in yourself, you know, or what you may dislike in yourself, you know, it's really going to bring up your shadow and it's really going to bring up the topic of relationships and it's going to be planting a new seed, one that is going to help you unravel toxic habits, toxic patterns, toxic traits within yourself and within relationships. Where are you attached to chaos within relationships? Where are you attached to kind of, you know, insecure traits within relationships? Where are you attached to chaotic emotions or unstable instability within relationships that's kind of holding you back? Where are you in lack in terms of your relationships, right? Where do you kind of feed the lack? This is something we've been talking about in my uh, mini program that's happening right now, Phoenix, for self-love and rebirth is like how you can kind of get in these insecure feedback loops. And part of that can be in relationships where you get into a relationship or you're in a friendship or you're in a connection because you're insecure already, but also that connection ends up feeding that insecurity because of the way they treat you or the way they talk to you or whatever. And because maybe you're afraid to be alone or you're afraid to stand up to them or you're afraid to be honest with them or whatever. And that ends up breeding more insecurity and it ends up making Making you feel even more insecure about yourself and so you have to recognize where you do this uh, with your connections and where you just do this in general right where are you attach to lack where are you attached to insecurity where are you attached to instability where are you attached to toxic traits or habits or chaos in general right that is really kind of pulling you down and kind of taking you out of your your own sense of confidence and your own sense of stability right so some of these things may need to be faced for us to be able to move forward right and so what i'm really seeing here 
The advice is to go into this month and really, really pay attention to how you're perceiving things because it's gonna be very, very easy to perceive things like this, like the upside down cup, like the cup is half empty rather than half full. It's gonna be very easy to go into this month with that kind of perception. And your perception is everything this month. Your perception is your key to everything. It's your advantage, right? Because when you are able to change your perception and see the glass half full instead of half empty, you move into this energy. You start seeing the beauty in the situation. You realize that the shackles that you have now become aware of that are holding you back are there. And it's important to realize that they're there, which yes, yeah, sometimes realizing they're there can be like shocking or somewhat surprising or like, damn, you know, it can be a little bit scary. But without realizing they're there, without becoming aware, Page of Swords, that they're there, without knowing that they're there, you can't cut them off. You can't do something about it, right? And so when you can see that as beautiful, because now you can find the beauty in the situation, because guess what? If I wouldn't have become aware of this, which yes, becoming aware of it is painful in some way or kind of sucks in some way, because now I have these like, you know, old toxic things coming up or these old feelings coming up or whatever the case may be. I, without that, I wouldn't have become aware of it to set myself free of it, right? So we have beauty, untamed, free, right? Then we have the spirit of the cat, curious and independent. Then we move into this independent bad bitch or bad ass energy, right? And we're able to see the cup as half full, right? We're able to like basically cleanse ourselves of this old shit that's causing us to be fearful, that's causing us less sleep at night, that makes us feel bad. Like, what is it that keeps you up at night? Because you know it's not in your integrity, because you know that you are more than that, because you deserve more than that, because that is what you need to face, right? That is where we need to get decisive and stop going up and down and stop feeding the instability, stop feeding the chaos, stop feeding the petty behaviors, stop feeding the old way of behaving and acting and doing things. Like, and that's where we actually get productive and we're able to get curious about the situation and then we're able to boom work on it, right? Then we're able to be productive with it. Then we're able to finally work on the situation to be able to move forward in confidence, right? To be able to see our potential, to see our dreams, to see our higher vision, to feel a sense of purpose and do that in confidence. But it is going to take bravery on your part to walk through some of these things, right? It is going to take bravery to follow that star, to trust that amazing things are coming when you release these old shackles, when you release these old toxic traits, and when you can start seeing these traits within yourself that maybe you haven't wanted to see because you don't like these things about yourself, but by seeing them, right, we move forward. And some of these things can play out in another person or a relationship as well. So do keep that in mind. Can be things that you're projecting onto a relationship or certain connections that you're keeping around that may not be the healthiest for you. That may actually be threatening to your stability, your internal stability. This is really about becoming secure, stable, and abundant, and, you know, being the creator within yourself instead of, you know, feeding the chaos loop of with others, right? Thinking that you need others out of a place of lack or others thinking they need you out of a place of lack, like whatever it is, you know? These old attachments to do with relationships, then we can finally like move through that energy. We also have the fourth house here. So, you know, there could be some things coming up in terms of home and family and your roots, you know, like really getting to the bottom of different things, really securing a new foundation for yourself. We also have the north node coming up here, destiny. Like I said, 
there are really big faded things this happening this month that are showing you the way forward and it's like to get there we can't up level with the same shit that we have now because that's the shit that's keeping us from up leveling in the first place so if you want to up level there's going to be some things that you have to clean up in your life right now and once you do you launch right once you do you launch once you do you move forward for some of you this definitely can also like there this month can bring up some things uh you know with your family you know your fourth house is leo the sun's going to be moving through your sixth and your seventh so for some of you this could be your relationships with your family <clears throat> in some way shape or form or how you care for or nurture others in some way you know maybe that's being called into question or maybe those are some traits that you are reflecting on you know do you really you know are you maybe too worried about other people's needs do you maybe need to worry about your own are you being a little bit too nurturing towards other people you know are you ready to like what do you really value in terms of you know family and your personal life and then we also have the square card, which is, you know, a challenge, facing a challenge, facing certain tensions. Again, this is motivating energy that will help you really step into your confidence. I really hope that you guys cannot see or hear <laughs> these, uh, all the noises going on outside because, wow, they are like really loud and disruptive. So I really hope you can't hear all that in the recording, but you probably can. So I do apologize. I don't know what's going on out there right now. It's a little crazy, it sounds like. But anyway, so you're moving. There is a sense of challenge, but this challenge is going to catapult you. This challenge is your launch. This challenge is part of your direction in life and part of literally your destiny, right? It's part of getting you where you want to go right on top of that we also have jupiter moving back into pisces which is your 11th house on the 28th so there's definitely going to be a revisiting of these aspects that you may have been uh feeling earlier this year in like the first you know four and a half months of this year of 2022 with friends acquaintances groups and you know networking and things like that and then we're also going to have the Mars retrograde in Gemini, which is your second house. So there's going to be a massive reflection going on on your ideas about finances, what you know or what you've learned about money, income, finances. You could be reflecting on new streams of income, new forms of income, you know, new resources, your values, what's important to you, you know, these kinds of things, your priorities. So that's going to start the very end of the month on the 30th. So with that being said, Taurus, hopefully this resonated for you. Uh, if you can, I would really, really appreciate it. If you could let me know down below, leave me a comment if this did resonate for you. And even if it didn't, let me know what you are experiencing right now. And if you're still watching this in the beginning of the month, then, you know, some of these things may happen later in the month. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, if you would like to get uh, weekly horoscopes that have, you know, that go into the astrology day by day, if you would like to get exclusive content, make sure to sign up for my Patreon below. That is the easiest and best way to support what I do and to get exclusive content each week and access to a lot of other things and all the other content that's on there already and then i also do readings uh which is also linked down below i have an astrology course for an e for easy relatable uh astrology education that will literally have you like knowing your chart better than another astrologer could read it for you and being able to recharge yourself it's like literally i am a i am a badass teacher <laughs> when it comes to astrology and other things too but definitely astrology like i make it very relatable i'm also thinking about revamping that uh course too so uh but yeah everything's linked down below if you would like more or if you would like to follow me on social media thank you so so much for watching taurus i hope you have an amazing month and i will see you in my next video Gemini and darling, uh, welcome to your October 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. Let's get into it. October is a crazy month. We start off October kind of in some chill energy other than the Saturn Uranus square, the final Saturn Uranus square happening, which is definitely shaking some things up in the world and the collective and giving all the vibes of freedom and, you know, really liberating, uh, <laughs> liberating vibes as well like liberating liberation from oppressive systems and rules and things like that and for you this is definitely possibly similar you know where you may be kind of 
feeling like you want some freedom and liberation from some kind of hierarchy or some kind of rules or some kind of institutions or, you know, something. And this has kind of been a theme for you over the last couple of years anyway that's really coming to a close here where you are really learning how to have, you know, some kind of freedom amongst something that feels like conditioning, something that feels uh, restricting and limiting, especially in terms of belief systems and education and, you know, maybe justice or legalities or something along those lines. And so this is something that is finally coming to a close, though. So it could be like a final breakthrough happening for you this month because there's also going to be a lot of air energy that is going to trine this month from the air signs of Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius from your first fifth and ninth house and so this is definitely in a way you know showing you what what kind of ideas and inspirations that you have and what you want to do socially and what feels good to you in your life in terms of your passions your inspirations you know your creativity the things that you really want to bring more of into the world and that feel purposeful and aligned with who you are as a person so that's kind of how we're starting October. It's definitely, uh, other than that, there's definitely kind of like a chill undertone, right? Like there's kind of this energy of like, okay, like harmony, balance, Libra season, cool. You know, it's your fifth house. You're probably feeling very creative and theatrical and poetic and having all these like really beautiful artsy creative ideas and you know maybe you're going out on dates or bringing some romance back into your life, bringing some love back into your life sorry about that and so this definitely these are definitely things that you can be noticing but as we move throughout the month in the middle of the month we have the aries full moon which is happening right in your 11th house of friends acquaintances and your social life networking things like this so this definitely can be kind of like a a revelation or something revealed or you finally you kind of feeling like okay I'm ready to go off on my own or you know I'm ready to even maybe you know do my own thing or show something to the world right something that maybe you've been creating and what I'm really getting this month especially in the cards for you Gemini is you're getting into like a witchy vibe, right? Like there's this witchy vibe that's coming in, you know, with the Scorpio energy at the end of the month coming in, which is like the big thing because it's eclipse season and we're gonna have a solar eclipse in Scorpio and that can definitely be a game changer. And that's happening in your sixth house of work, health, your day-to-day -day routines, you know, attachments and habits, attachments to habits, that you have that need to be shed, purged, and let go of. You know, there could be a detox that's that's happening. But the sixth house is also very crafty, and especially this Scorpio energy coming after this Libra energy of your fifth house of like fun, love, romance, things that you find passion in. I think that you're really getting into maybe some craftiness, you know, because we have the spirit of fire, which is passion, creativity, spark, and the spirit of the witch which is magic, psychic, and sorcery. So you definitely could be getting into those vibes. You definitely could be feeling drawn to maybe some occult things, you know, maybe some things that are drawing you to some things of mystery, you know. We also have Spirit of the Grim Reaper, death, ending, and winter. So there definitely could be some endings happening this month as well. I would say probably especially towards the end of the month as we move into that scorpion energy. And on top of it, the ruler of Scorpio is Mars and Mars is in your sign and going to go retrograde at the very end of this month. So you're going to be really feeling that Scorpio eclipse with Mars in your sign since Mars is the ruler of that eclipse. So there's going to be this energy where you're maybe feeling a darker aesthetic this month where you're maybe like, yeah, like I want to start dressing different. I want to start, I want to get into my witchy vibes. I want to get into like my dramatic theatrical vibes, you know, like you're, you're definitely feeling those kinds of things or likely feeling those kinds of things. And you're wanting to possibly take a new approach in your day-to-day -day reality, your day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day task. And you're also, I think, a little bit on the fence. You know, we have the Two of Swords reversed. There's a decision that I think you may kind of be avoiding or trying not to make. You know, I think that there is something here that you could be 
kind of confused about. And as Mars goes retrograde on the 30th, you know, you're definitely going to be reflecting on decisions you've been making, choices you've been making these last this last month or two. You're going to be reflecting on different aspects, different sides, different ways of seeing things. And so there may be something here that you're really reflecting on as we start October, some like some kind of choice, some kind of crossroads, some kind of decision that you're really maybe confused about or struggling to make at the moment. We also have the Knight of Cups and Five of Swords then coming up here. I feel this decision for some of you could somehow deal with a relationship. This could even be something from the past, right? This could be something from the past. It may not be something from the present. So it just depends on your situation. But I really do feel here, Gemini, that what I'm kind of getting is you <clears throat> thought that, you know, especially with Mercury going retrograde in your fifth house, there could have been someone that you were interested in or someone that you really felt a certain way about that seemed very charming at first. But with the five of swords here, there may have been a betrayal or it could have been like a lose-lose situation where it was like, I'm losing out by doing this or maybe they weren't what you thought they were. You started seeing them in a different light. And so there was kind of a retreat that happened, right? An eight of cups, um, either on your end or their end, right? It could be one or the other. So there was kind of a retreat that happened. It was like, okay, I deserve better, right? But then we got into this energy of, ooh, that hurts, right? This is painful. The three of swords, the devil card, this hurts. Wow, I kind of do feel betrayed or they feel betrayed, one of the two or both, right? And now I really see where I've been holding myself back. Now I really see how this has been, you know, a toxic habit or toxic behavior or toxic pattern, you know, that has this karmic cycle that has been going, that has been really holding me back in my life. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm ready to move on, right? I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to stop giving this so much power, right? And then we have the Six of Wands, which is beautiful because this is triumph, right? This is moving on. This is like, I'm no longer going to let this hold me down, right? It's like you finally learn the lessons. You're finally in this place of, you know, you successfully moved through this basically, right? And so you or another person, I feel like, you know, may have walked away. For some of you, this may not be romantic. Maybe it was a friendship, right? But I feel like there's some kind of ending happening here. There's some kind of, you know, walking away happening here. Maybe it's not even a relationship. You know, cups are usually feelings. They're usually connections with people, but could have been a creative project. You know, it could have been something that <clears throat> you did have some kind of emotional attachment to, but it didn't quite... You know, it ended up feeling out of integrity. It ended up not being what you originally perceived it would be. And so it got to this point where it was like, I have to retreat. There are better things for me out there, right? This is not the only thing. This is not the only solution. And so, you know, it's kind of like as well, like you're, you're trying to reflect, you're trying to wait on making a decision, but I feel like the decision ends up kind of happening naturally, like where you really kind of see through the bullshit. And this could also be happening because Mars is going to square Neptune this month. Mars in your sign is going to square Neptune in your 10th house. Could be a passion, could be a creative interest. It could be, you know, something that you wanted to fulfill in terms of your professional life, you know? But either way, I think it's like there's some healing that is definitely happening this month. There is some, you know, perception shifts and there is, you know, a sense of facing something that, you know, you may have been feeling insecure about. Oh, look at that. We got your card, Gemini. <laughs> so there's definitely this sense of moving on and triumph over over things that were a little bit hurtful or over things that stung a little bit, whether past or present. And this definitely could be a relationship because Venus is going to be conjunct this solar eclipse, you know? And so it's kind of like, you know, maybe something is revealed or something finally comes to a close and a new seed is planted after, you know, something else finally dies, right? And so I also think that it's going to be really important this month, Gemini, to watch out for your health you know it might be a good idea to go on a cleanse at least one that's like safe you know a detox something that 
really purges things, right? So we have your card, we have the ten, uh, the North Node in the 10th house. So this month is very much about purpose, destiny, you know, where you're going from here, forward momentum. And to do that, it's like you have to get rid of the old. You have to get rid of the things that are just not you, you know, and you have to really cut those things out. And, you know, 10th house and North Node, very much about your career, your achievements, where you're headed in life, you know, where you're wanting to go and what feels aligned, what feels destined, what feels faded. So all of that is kind of circling back around, you know, so that is really what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. Jupiter is going to retrograde back into your 10th house as well at the end of the month on the 28th. And so you're going to get like a, a reintegration or a completing of lessons that happened in the first like four and a half to five months of 2022 with Jupiter in your 10th. Um, you know, there were things that you learned around then with, in terms of your career, in terms of your expansion, in terms of where you were wanting to go, in terms of your dreams and your professional life. And that's going to come back around so you can really reintegrate those lessons and have like a second chance to really learn what that transit was about for you. So that is what I'm getting for you, Gemini. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I would really, really appreciate it if you could leave me a comment down below and let me know if anything in this reading resonated with you or if you could see some of these things occurring in October. Uh, if not, then let me know what you are experiencing down below and come back and see if it resonates later in the month. You never know. So also, if you would like to get exclusive astrology uh, weekly horoscopes from me where I go over each day of the week and other exclusive comments content from me, make sure to sign up for my Patreon. That is the easiest and best way that you can support me and my channel and what I do and get uh, exclusive content and get more content uh, from me on a more frequent basis. Also, I do readings. I have uh, an astrology course. I have other programs and classes. All of that is down below. I love you guys and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your October 2022 Tarot and Astrology reading for the month ahead. October is a crazy month, so definitely buckle up because we got a lot going on, uh, especially towards the very end of the month. So Cancer, October starts off where there is a pretty large focus on home, family, your foundations, your roots, you know, your relationships and dynamics within your family and really trying to find more peace, harmony and balance, fairness in terms of your home, personal life and family life, right? And so you're really definitely more focused and word at this time and wanting to really find more peace and ease and just you know, a sense of like chill the fuck out kind of energy in your home, family life and personal life. And so, you know, you could be redecorating, you could be, you know, working on something related to beauty and pleasure and harmony within your home. And so those are definitely some things that you could see coming up. Sorry, I don't like when like multiple cards fall out at once. Uh, so <clears throat> that's kind of how we start October. And then we really get into this energy of the Aries full moon around mid-October, like around the 9th, which is your 10th house. And so around the 9th, there's definitely going to be more of a focus on your career and maybe some things revealed in terms of, you know, your own independent goals, your own independent, you know, achievements and what you independently and individually desire for your life outside of your family or outside of what your family thinks or outside of your personal life, you know. And so those are the things that you could see coming up around then. And then as we get to the end of the month and this into Scorpio season is where things start definitely drastically shifting because we enter into eclipse season and we are going to have a solar eclipse in Scorpio on the 25th. And this is going to be conjunct Venus, which rules your fourth house. Um, and the eclipse itself will be happening in your fifth house. So there definitely can be some home and family stuff that also comes up on this eclipse. And also there can be uh, a sense of sexuality, romance, children, you know, dating, you know, anything like that that can kind of come up with this eclipse too. The fifth house deals with creativity and where we find our joy in life. And with this solar eclipse on Venus here, uh, this can definitely be planting seeds of like maybe toxic attachments to 
certain things that need to be let go of and regarding those themes I named off of like home, family, children, you know, sexuality, things like that, that we need to let go of things that can be somewhat tempting, right? With this temptation <laughs> card here, right? And maybe old, old traumas regarding some of those things, you know, something is definitely going to be brought to light. And a seed is going to be planted where we are going to eventually, you know, see where we have certain fears and attachments and maybe some toxic traits holding us back in this area, right? And with Scorpio ruling your fifth, I would definitely think, you know, this could be something around intimacy. This could be something around sexuality. This could be something around maybe even shame uh, regarding those things or shame regarding doing what you love or doing things that bring you a sense of pleasure or that bring you a sense of joy. You know, you're really seeing like where you may operate and lack around things that you love or things that like really set your heart on fire in some way, you know, creativity, you know, um, or, you know, your relationship with your significant other, your children, you know, whatever your dating life, you know, where you may have some toxic traits or where you may attract some toxic uh, traits in your dating life. And then also, you know, this could also be toxic traits that you have in terms of having fun as well. You could go to an extreme here, right, where you kind of start crossing a line where, you know, are you drinking too much? Do you have certain, you know, like fixes that, you know, started off as fun, but maybe now not so much, right? And you do have to be careful if you resonate with that because Mars is in your 12th house, right? This is a time of really seeing where your mindset, where your mentality, where your kind of subconscious patterns, you know, thinking patterns can really screw you over at times. And where you can sometimes deal with addictions possibly for some of you or where you may need to do some healing where there may be some self-sabotaging where you may need to kind of take a step back and you know focus on healing your mind and healing certain toxic attra attachments that you have self-sabotaging behaviors focus on your mental health you know these kinds of things now that may not be for all of you you know that's why i'm naming all kinds of different things just to you know, cover a lot of what this could be, a lot of the different possibilities that this could be, you know, and so just so everybody may find something they relate to. But if you do have toxic traits or attachments in terms of, you know, sexuality, addiction, etc., these are the things that you may see come up, right? So definitely let me know if any of that resonates or if you could see any of that happening or what you are noticing come up, et cetera. I'd love to hear your own feedback, right? This could also be inner child work. You know, we do have the spirit of the child. And for some of you, this could even be your relationship with your own children where you have certain fears or where you're feeding certain fears with more lack with your relationship with your child in some way, you know, where maybe there is, you know, there's certain things that need to be faced, right? And so, um, but also this could be where you are tested because of, or tempted because of certain immature behaviors that you have that are toxic or, you know, certain uh, old behaviors that come up that are toxic, you know, like I said, drinking too much or gambling or, you know, something along those lines out of that insecurity or feeling of lack or toxic traits. And so we also have the spirit of the draft, which is all about perception, foresight, and advantage. Okay. So it definitely is seeing things from a different perception, from a different perspective this month. And kind of, I feel like you guys can kind of see it coming, right? It's like, you almost have to play the tape out, right? If you feel tempted, it's like, play the tape out right? See how it all is going to go. Look at it through a lens of, okay, if I do X, X, and X, where is that going to lead me? Where is Where am I going to end up with that, right? Is it actually going to fulfill me at the end of the day? Is it going to like bring what I want into my life? Am I actually going to go somewhere with it? Am I actually going to evolve with this, right? Like, and so really do that if, you know, if this is relating so far. We also have the seven of wands here and the lovers. And so I think that, again, this is bringing up where you have certain possible insecurities in relationships or with love, right? 
uh, where you may, you know, the Seven of Wands is very much like the underdog, um, but not really. Like they, the Seven of Wands has more power than he thinks he does. It just seems like the odds are against him, right? And it could feel like that in relationships or in your romantic life. You could kind of see this month, you know, where, again, where your perception isn't quite reality in some way. And that's very true anyway, because with Mars in your 12th, you know, it's going to square Neptune in your ninth. So it's like you may not be seeing thing everything quite clear, right? So just keep that in mind. So, you know, you could definitely feel combative in your relationships or, you know, there could be these old combative or defensive tendencies and habits that come up that you realize this month or that you need to address, right? That you kind of hold back, like where do you kind of hold back and, and where do you want to overcome some of these things, right? How can you overcome some of these things? Part of it is finding that sense of balance and harmony with temperance here. Part of it is moderation, right? And again, this also kind of makes me think that for some of you, this could be like partying, this could be like drinking, this could be like, you know, certain habits that, yeah, if done occasionally may not be a big problem, but if you are doing them to escape, ex especially with Mars in your 12th, you know, this definitely, it could become a problem, right? And so where, where do you need to balance things out in your life? Where do you need to find that middle ground? And, you know, because this could be like taking things from one extreme to the next. And this is really going to show you that, right? This is really going to show you where, you know, where fun can become too much fun. And where that's happened before, right? Patterns where that's happened before, where you may, like that may come back around. Where it's like, oh, I've seen this before. I know that's how it was for me when the South Node and the eclipses were moving through my fifth house. Last year, it was like, I just wanted to have fun and then I quickly saw where fun could turn into too much fun and actually end up being not healthy, you know, and not good and not really fun at all and not really what I wanted, you know? Like, so you have to just, you know, if there's certain unhealthy uh, vices that you're getting into or that you've noticed and they don't even have to be like physical things it doesn't have to be like drinking or you know substance abuse or gambling or whatever it can be internal things like that maybe you rely on uh you know relationships to to feel fulfilled or maybe you you know have certain insecurities in your current existing relationship you know um, from the past maybe there's fears surrounding your your parenting and your child and certain old attachment you know traits that need to be worked through right it can be a lot of different things but you're gonna find that stability through the middle ground through balance through temperance right um through kind of finding that that flow in between and not going from one extreme or the next. And it can be very easy to do that with the Scorpio energy. You're gonna find the stability and the security and the solidity through temperance, right? And even through like healing and recovery and and you know mediation, right? Again, that like that middle ground harmony, right? And then we also have then we have the two of wands here, right? And so from there, it's like, again, <laughs> finding the middle ground. Like once we find that, that middle, once we find that in-between place, then we can truly see, right? Then things become clear mentally with the queen of, or the king of swords here, right? Then we can kind of see the truth of it all, right? Then we can kind of see the truth of it all. And then the 10 of cups and the four of swords, then things become very clear. Then we can rest, right? Mars retrograde in your 12th, you're going to need to rest your mind a lot. You're going to need to take breaks. You're going to need to really focus on your rest because, you know, the 12th house is sleep. The 12th house is rest. The 12th house is taking a break. This is going to be perfect for going on a retreat, right? This is perfect for getting away. This is perfect for going on some kind of healing venture, you know? And for some of you that like may know a Cancer rising that is struggling or that is going through dealing with some toxic behaviors or 
partying or whatever, for some, this could be rehabilitation in some way, recovery in some way, you know, like, but getting there is, again, temperance and finding that, that balance. I mean, not everybody, obviously, as a recovering, recovering addict myself, I do know that not everybody can just like, I can't just moderately use drugs, you know, like that's obviously not, <laughs> not helpful, but um, I can stop using drugs and moderate my life, you know, <laughs> from there, then I can find balance, right? So it just, it's going to depend on your situation, but I'm just, you know, I can't win them all here, you know, I'm, I'm trying though. So anyways, <laughs> that is what I see. Um, oh, wait, hold on. I forgot. I have another deck to draw cards from. Da -da -da -da. Um, so yeah, I think that it is definitely a balance this month, Cancer. There could also be some complexity going on in your social life. There could be uh, some complication going on in your social life, uh, some, some changes beginning to happen in terms of, you know, your social life, your friends, the people and groups that you hang out with, you know, that could definitely uh, come up as well. And some of this could be because of whatever this Scorpio eclipse brings up in your fifth house. Um, some of the complexity that can be brought up there, because Taurus is actually simple and, you know, like not very complex, where Scorpio is a little bit more complex and chaotic. And so uh, for some of you, like I've said, a lot of you may be experiencing a lot going on in terms of your home and your family and your fourth house at the beginning of the month. Um, and then we have the Pisces energy here, so which is very healing. It's a very healing -y energy. And Jupiter is going to retrograde back into Pisces at the very end of the month uh, on the 28th. And so that definitely is going to be a time of really discovering new beliefs and integrating lessons that you learned in the first four and a half months of the year in terms of your beliefs, your philosophies, and, you know, things that you may have learned about healing in the world and, you know, things of a higher purpose and a higher understanding, uh, you know, educational pursuits that you were maybe inspired by or that you were on at the time, you know, there's going to be a reintegration of those things. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer. Please let me know down below if this resonated or if you could see some of these things unfolding in October. I would really love to hear your story and your feedback and your experiences. As always, it would really, really mean a lot to me. And then also, if you would like to get a horoscope from me every week where I go over the astrology of each day, uh, make sure to join me over on Patreon. That is the best way to support support me and this channel and everything that I do. And I do exclusive content over there weekly. Uh, and so that is definitely linked down below if you are interested. I also do readings. I offer courses, classes, programs, all kinds of things also linked down below. Follow me on social media to keep up with me. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Woo. Alrighty, Leo. Let's do this. My fellow Leo risings and also possibly Leo suns and moons out there as well. Welcome to your October 2022 Tarot and Astrology reading. <laughs> Let's get into this. So, Leo, October is an interesting month. It's pretty much a big deal because we are uh, entering into eclipse season towards the end of October. And that is a big deal for us, right? And I'm going to explain why in a minute. But the first part of October, we are finishing up the Saturn-Uranus square, the last one. And this has been something we've been going through for the last couple of years now, you know, with Uranus in our 10th house getting very innovative and getting very, like, you know, rebellious in terms of our career and where we're going in the world, uh, wanting to have more individuality in terms of what we do in our lives, in terms of where we're headed in our lives and really go against the grain and maybe work for ourselves or do something for ourselves, like have our own freedom in terms of our career and our professional life and and what we do in the world and then also Saturn in our seventh house of relationships where we are really kind of you know having this serious more serious 
take on relationships, this more serious energy surrounding our relationships the last couple of years and seeing like what we really want, what we really desire inside of a relationship, where that is limiting us, where relationships are limiting us, where we need to have more boundaries or higher standards in terms of our relationships, what we want long term in terms of relationships, what's going to be stable in terms of relationships, and also you like more responsibility possibly in terms of relationships or where certain relationships feel like they are limiting us or holding us back from the future that we want to have. And so these are big things that we've been dealing with for the last couple of years, you know, like we're taking our commitments very seriously and we're thinking like long term about them. This isn't just like, okay, I'll date you and see how it works out for now. You know, this is like, no, is this somebody that I can be with for the long term? Is this somebody that I want to have a life with, that I want to commit to, that I want to have a relationship with, that I want to somewhat be responsible for? You know, like, is this somebody that I see myself with long term? And we have to have the strength card at the bottom of the deck. Uh, so these are themes that are really coming back up as we are entering into October. And this is the final square. So this is the final breakthrough. This is like the final chapter of this story that's been going on between our relationships and our career and long-term goals and et cetera. And so we're really kind of, I think, figuring that out finally. You know, We're really kind of like, okay, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. Is this a future that I want? Is this what I don't want? You know, like, um, where are these limitations in my relationships holding me back from the life I want or my career or my professional life? Uh, you know, these kinds of things, right? And I'd love to know how you're feeling that or noticing that coming up in your life down below. So definitely let me know. So on top of that, uh, we are in Libra season and Libra season is our third house of communications, our day-to-day -day errands, our day-to-day -day surroundings and environments, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, who we speak to, the people, places, and things that we communicate with on a day-to-day -day basis, the different events and local, you know, situations that we find ourselves in. And it's also very mental and very much deals with communication. So this can be great for like a lot of different insights, creative ideas, you know, a lot of community you know, events and things happening. You know, I know that for me as like a content creator, I've just been having so many different creative ideas and like poems coming to me, which I mean, I'm already like a poet basically anyway, but I've, uh, cause my son is in Libra, but like, it's just been, I've been feeling very poetic and very artistic lately uh, with all of this third house energy. And so this is a chill time. It's like, you know, it's vibey, right? It's definitely vibey. It's all about the aesthetic. It's all about like, you know, it's just chill. Like we just want to be around chill energy right now, likely. And just do things that feel good, that feel harmonious, right? Like, and so we could also see kind of topics of, you know, relatives, siblings, neighbors, communities, neighborhoods coming up as well. There could be short trips or short travels that come up that we're going on with uh, it being Libra season. And we're coming to different conclusions about things. You know, what we thought we knew is being reflected on in some way because Mercury went retrograde in Libra and it's going to re-enter Libra uh, this month on the 10th. And so we're going to be really moving back over things and seeing like, what we thought we knew versus what we know now and our perception may change on some things, our perspective may change on some things. And so that's gonna be interesting. And we've really also been in this energy, like we're coming into October from this energy of really trying to get organized and get detailed with our finances, right? And with money and with our income and really kind of, you know, seeing where we need to be more practical in terms of money and income and things like that versus where we need to kind of trust and have more of like a, an expansive mindset around money. And so we're moving into Libra season. And so we're kind of starting off the month in this energy, right? Then we also have on the 9th, the Aries full moon, and this is happening in our ninth house, right? And this may be a peak moment for our belief systems, our worldviews, travel. Uh, we may be seeing something from a different perspective, a higher perspective. And then as we move later on in the month, we get to Scorpio season. And this is where the big changes start to happen. So around the 23rd, the sun and Venus will enter Scorpio. And Scorpio is our fourth house of home, 
family, our roots, our foundation, where we live, our, our home life, our personal life, you know, our ancestors, our parents, you know, things like this. And this is where the solar eclipse is happening for us in the fourth house of home and family, our personal life, our roots, our foundations. And the solar eclipse is happening on the 25th and it's planting a seed. And what that seed is going to do is it's going to show us what needs to be let go of, what needs to be purged, what we need to get rid of, what's no longer stable, what fears that we have in terms of home, family, past, things like that, what we've maybe been attached to, old guilt, shame, remorse, you know, loss that we've been attached to that we need to shed, that we need to purge, that we need to let go of. It's going to show us what needs to be shed. The way that I've been describing this energy for Leo Risings is in order to go where you want to go and achieve what you want to achieve in your life, in the world, in your career with the North Node in Taurus and our 10th house, it's like we want to achieve certain things. We want to achieve the, the success, the physical success, the you know financial success, the financial freedom, the abundance, et cetera, et cetera, the recognition, whatever it is. But in order to achieve that, we have to address these things going on in our personal life. We have to shed certain fears and certain behind the scenes things. It's like kind of like the skeletons in our closet, right? Because by not addressing them, we are staying the same. And to gain the wisdom that we need to gain to get to where we wanna go, we have to address these skeletons in our closet, right? And so, this is kind of the energy that we've been in in 2022. And I've noticed it a lot <laughs> as a Leo rising myself. It's like every time I want to expand or I have something that like the next thing that I'm manifesting or the next level that I want to move to, there's something that I need to leave behind. There's something from my past or there's something, you know, going on in my personal life that needs to be shifted and changed for me to do that. Right. And so with this solar eclipse, this is a new beginning because it's a new moon happening. It's like a void happening of creation, but one that is about letting go of what's been in the dark, letting go of old fears, old limitations around lack, old ways of being around lack and so it may show us where we are still in fear or where we still are in lack in terms of our home our family where we may still be in survival you know um you know survival mode in some ways because of things we've went through in the past where we still may have these irrational fears or just old skeletons in our closet that it's like time to go, you know? It's like we're ready to release them. These things from our past that have been haunting us or, you know, these new changes that need to be made in order for us to get to where we wanna go. And so with this, this definitely could bring up a change in the personal life, a change in the home life, a change in your roots, or a, a beginning of a releasing of old fears, old anxieties, old survival mode mechanisms that we no longer want to hold on to in terms of our life and in terms of home, in terms of family, in terms of our past, right? And so it's really releasing a lot of attachments to our past, I think. For some people, yeah, this could be a change in your home life, a change in, you know, where you live or a revisiting of the past, you know? Um, something along those lines, right? So let me know down below how you end up experiencing it because I really would love to know. And if you could see any of these things happening, what you are noticing so far, I would really love to know. So let's get to your cards. This is interesting. We have the spirit of the witch coming up here, which is magic, psychic, and sorcery. So we're definitely possibly feeling witchy, you know, we're feeling the, we're feeling the shadow season vibes uh, coming and we are possibly feeling a little bit witchy, you know, we're feeling the magic of this, of this season, of this time, right? We also have the spirit of the elephant, community, social companionship. So this is the Libra third house, you know, energies that I was really referring to as we are you know, maybe going out a little bit more, maybe exploring our surroundings, our town, our city, our environments a little bit more, maybe feeling a little bit more social, 
putting our ideas out there, sharing our ideas with others, collaborating with others. We also have the spirit of Pegasus, which is unrealistic delusions, not as it seems. So there could definitely be uh, some energy coming up where we have the word something isn't what is it what it seems. You know, Mars is and it's uh, Mars is in the eleventh house, squaring Neptune this month, and so there can be an energy here of us not really seeing something clearly or something not really being what we thought it was, right? And it's Mars is gonna retrograde at the end of the month. And this definitely could have to do with a uh, community, with friendships, acquaintances, our social life as well. Uh, and, you know, possibly, you know, someone not being honest with us or something like that. And then we also have spirits of the past, nostalgic, aching, and old flame. So this definitely could be some things from the past coming up. We could be feeling nostalgic. We could be, you know, exploring, like I said, our past or different, you know, revisiting the past in some kind of way. And so that is basically what I'm seeing here. We also have the high priestess coming up here. So I really feel like there may be something that we have been waiting on. We've been trying to figure something out. We've been trying to wrap our heads around something. We've been like trying to find the answer to something. And I feel like this month, Leo, is like the, the quicker that you surrender, the quicker that you release, the quicker that you let go, right? The quicker that you let go is when the answers will be revealed right with the hangman and the high priestess we have a lot of major arcana here the answers are within you but you're not going to find them until you're able to surrender right until you're able to take a step back until you're able to surrender until you're able to really you know slow down and then you have that insight right that's when you have that insight and from there the vision becomes clear with the star and the hermit here you know, so if you've been like pushing in your life, if you feel like I don't understand what's going on here, because there has been just like a lot of confusion, there's been a lot of confusing energy the last several months. So if you've been kind of like looking for answers and it you, ha you haven't had much success, the answers come once you're able to surrender, once you're able to, you know, kind of surrender to the flow with the high priestess because the high priestess is like you already know the answers intuitively right you're basically just hiding them from yourself and you find that by surrendering almost by no longer looking for the answers right that's basically how you find it because by no longer looking for the answers you change your mindset right you change your mindset and then it's like oh yeah okay i get it now right and then a new perspective comes in so from there, I feel like there is, you know, I kind of feel like there's a part of you that feels like maybe you had to emotionally detach and just kind of do what felt practical, right? Do what felt logical, do what felt practical, do what felt rational, do what felt realistic, you know? And so there's a part of you that kind of gave up intuitively on your own magic for a little bit there and your own sense of you know, purpose and vision and, and, you know, hope and yourself maybe and in the world or in your dreams, whatever. And I feel like this month, Jupiter moving back into Pisces at the end of the month is going to return you to that. It's going to help you integrate lessons that you were being taught the first four to five months of 2022. Um, and so this is going to be beautiful because then from there, you begin to know the truth begins to be revealed with the Queen of Swords and things are balanced out, right? Things are balanced out from there and you begin to really see everything. You begin to see all sides of everything and you begin to, you're able to kind of find the, the balance in that, right? Find the harmony within that to, to really see things from different angles and all sides and a sense of, a sense of peace begins to arise, right? 
and you begin to really own your truth and you begin to really feel like, okay, you know, you begin to feel more certain and less confused, right? And then that turns into prosperity. That turns into, you know, feeling the energy of abundance, feeling the energy of stability, feeling the energy of security, new ideas or new ways of bringing in money or income or a new, a new, a new sense, a, a new job or whatever the case may be, you know, it's going to be a little different for different ones of you, but it brings in more prosperity once and it all starts with you surrendering. All starts with flow and that really is the key to this month it really is it, it's like yes you've had to see this other side of being realistic of being practical of kind of having to put your emotions aside or your intuition or your trust aside and just do what needed to be done but this month is going to be very healing it's going to be like things are going to be set right in some way. That's really what I'm getting here. It's like things are going to be set right in some way. And it's going to be very healing. And boom, you are finally moving forward in, in terms of what feels destined, what feels faded, right? And, and getting that sense of fulfillment and feeling that sense of purpose and feeling that sense of integrity within yourself, right? And, and seeing why certain things have unfolded the way they have this year so that is what i'm seeing for you leo for the month of september definitely let me know or not september october <laughs> definitely let me know down below if this reading helped you and resonated i would really really love to hear your feedback leo it would really mean a lot to me and i'd love to see how my fellow leo risings are doing and you know if any of that resonated with you because i know a lot of it did with me so <laughs> anyway if you would like to support me further and also get weekly uh, like a weekly horoscope that goes over a day-to-day -day basis uh, the astrology for like a day-to-day -day basis then you can support me on patreon it really helps support what I do here and helps me be able to continue to do what I do so and then also I do other exclusive content over there as well and I have courses classes programs all linked down below you can get personal readings with me as well right now and follow me on socials if you don't already to keep up with me and everything that I do. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Alrighty, Virgo, last but not least, welcome to your reading and astrology horoscope for the month of October, 2022. I hope you guys are doing well. So this month, Virgo, is a big deal. We are entering into eclipse season, season later on at the end of this month. And so the end of this month is going to be very different from the first part of this month. So the first part of this month, we are really kind of ending this Saturn Uranus story that we've been having for the last couple of years. This square, this, this aspect of challenge between your responsibilities, tasks, and duties at work and your sense of responsibility and your sense of duty for your day-to-day -day routines, your health, you know, these kinds of things versus your philosophies, your belief systems, your worldviews, you know, what you believe in and what you value, you know, in terms of life in general, right? And so these things could have been in conflict with each other for the last couple of years where you've really been maybe struggling in terms of like, wanting a sense of freedom philosophically and believing in a sense of like freedom and liberation and things like that versus your responsibilities, your duties, and the things that you feel you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis to, you know, really live the lifestyle that you want to live, right? And so there's been kind of a challenge here going on the last few years. And this is finally coming to its peak and ending in the beginning of October. And so there may finally be a breakthrough here for you. You may finally, you know, realize some things with this story that's been kind of going on the last few years as we enter into October. So then the middle of the month, we will have the Aries full moon, which will be in your eighth house. 
And so, you know, we've been in this Libra and energy, which is your second house of money, finances, your income, your possessions, your priorities. And so you've been really reflecting, you know, there's been a lot going on in terms of money and finances lately. And, you know, where your money and finances go and the dynamics of your money and finances, like, you know, where you put your money and finances, who you share your money and finances with, where they go, you know, like who you uh, who you collaborate with in terms of your money and finances. And so you've been really trying to find a, a sense of peace and balance here in terms of your income, in terms of your money, in terms of your resources, your possessions. And so around this Aries full moon on the 9th, you know, you're going to be really more so focused on your own individual wealth, your own individual like sense of what you want to do in terms of money and financially, what you want to invest in, what you want to, you know, what you want to bring to life. And so, you know, there there's definitely going to be some financial things that come up around that time as well that may be revealed to you or that, you know, may be something that kind of kicks you into gear around that time. So uh, then is where things get interesting towards the end of the month. We have Venus and the Sun moving into Scorpio around the 23rd, and this is your third house. And then we are going to have an eclipse here, uh, the solar eclipse in Scorpio on the 25th. And so this is going to be interesting. You know, this is really going to be showing you where you have, you know, certain certain fears, certain, you know, uh, attachments in terms of your local environment, your day-to-day -day reality, your day-to-day -day life, the people, places, and things that you are coming to contact with on a day-to-day -day basis. This can definitely bring up a sense of like a perception shift as well about where you live or the, the town or city or uh, something along those lines that you live in or the conversations that you're having or the, the people that you're around or the environments that you're in on a day-to-day -day basis. This can also be, you know, a new beginning in terms of the environments that you're in. Maybe you decide, you know what, like this this place isn't for me anymore. I'm ready to, I'm ready to go somewhere else. I'm ready to change, you know. Uh, this could also bring up certain fears that you have, you know, in terms of your your situation, in terms of where you're at, in terms of uh, possibly relatives or cousins or siblings, uh, you know, you're the area that you that you live in, uh, and this can bring up certain intense and powerful conversations that can also cause some kind of change. But it's really very much so a change in perspective, a change in you know what you may think that you know, Virgo, and also a change in how you're going about things on a day to day basis in terms of your career and your long-term vision for your future. So that's definitely uh, the big thing here because Mars is in your 10th house of career, your reputation, your long-term goals, your long-term achievements, you know, your professional life. And so you may feel like you're in this kind of rut right now because we have the spirit of time, illusion, endless waiting. And so there's a lot of work stuff coming up here with for you, Virgo. And this could also be kind of showing you um, where you kind of may feel things are a little bit unjust or unfair financially, uh, especially in terms of relationships or in terms of just your own financial situation. It could feel like, you know, you're in this endless waiting cycle. You know, we also have the devil here. So there's definitely this energy of feeling stuck, trapped, disempowered, powerlessness, you know. And so we, I think that you're kind of starting the month in this energy. But as the month continues to go on, I think that you'll see that it's all been in how you're perceiving it. It's all been in illusion, basically. You know, you've been kind of perceiving it as this endless waiting thing, but I think that really you start to begin to see this as a new chapter and something new that needs to develop. So I think that there could be uh, an opportunity that comes in this month, Virgo, where you have an opportunity to commit to something else. You know, this could be a contract with Spirit of the Ring here. Uh, this could be something that really comes into your reality and it's like, oh, this is what I have to do. Or it could be a commitment or a contract that you're like, 
this needs to end because this is taking too much from me, right? Because we also have unfinished business on this card. So there definitely could be something that comes in here where you're like, this is taking too much from me. You're really seeing where you're in lack on a day-to-day -day basis and what where you're putting your energy and how you may subconsciously be putting your energy in places that actually are not really beneficial and that are actually taking from you at the end of the day. And so that's kind of what I see here. We also have spirit of the child, <clears throat> innocent, immature, and adventurous. So this could definitely also be something where, you know, you may be seeing where you have these immature attitudes, where you have these immature attachments that again are holding you back and keeping you trapped. These immature views or these things that you think you know that, that could be called into question this month. Because the third house is very much about what you kind of think and know or you think you know on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And so these are the things that are kind of being called into question, right? And and how you communicate with people and, you know, the power dynamics that may be at play in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. So we also have the Eight of Pentacles coming up here with the King of Pentacles and the Six of Pentacles. So uh, a lot of Pentacles cards here. So I really see you, like, working very hard towards some kind of stability and security, you know, towards like a long-term goal that feels more grounded, stable, and secure. And with the Six of Pentacles here, there is kind of this giving and receiving aspect of where, you know, you also kind of feel like maybe as much as you're bringing in, it's going out, or uh, that you're trying to find a balance between uh, maybe giving and receiving or spending money and saving money or giving to other people because that's just who you are. That's the nature of who you are. You know, you like to give, but where does that end up leaving you out, right? And so you're starting to see that and you're starting to see that if you want to get to your goals, something has to change with the death card here, right? Something has to change. You can't get there with the same mindset or the same behaviors, the same attachments that you have right now. And so there is some kind of transformation. There is something that needs to be changed here. There is something that needs to be transformed here. There is something that needs to be let go of here, right? And then we have the Nine of Cups and the Star card and the Queen of Cups. And so this is really getting clear on what feels worthy and abundant to you, right? The Nine of Cups is abundance. It literally is abundance, um, but it's not pinnacle. So it's not physical. It's actually feeling abundance. It's actually a state of feeling abundant, feeling blissful, feeling fulfilled. Like it is more than fulfilled, right? So there is, I also kind of feel like there's this balance that needs to be found between kind of waiting and kind of feeling like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, sit and do nothing versus this feeling of taking action, but it kind of feels endless, right? And so there's kind of this, this balance that needs to be found with this. And then we have the star card, right? Which is really like, I think that there's an emptying, because I'm just really focusing on her emptying these cups here. I feel like there's an emptying that needs to happen. There's like just a total emptying that needs to happen of like everything that you may think that you know about whatever situation this is or whatever issue you're having, like there needs to be an emptying that happens because then we have the Queen of Cups. And from that emptying, then you actually have the wisdom. Then you actually have the emotional wisdom you actually are able to not just intellectualize things but feel things and intuitively you then from there know what to do right then you're guided from there and so i really feel like that is something that you know that that's what's happening here virgo if that makes sense hopefully that makes sense to you i just feel like it's kind of like you're letting go of things that you've been holding on to stubbornly this month. Ideas that you've been holding on to stubbornly. And you, yes, it kind of feels like it's taking forever or it kind of feels like a, a slow process or it kind of feels stuck. But the more that you let go of, the more 
you're able to be refilled with things that actually feel more aligned for you, right? The, the more you're able to see clearly, the more things start making sense, right? So that's kind of what I'm getting here for you. We have Scorpio, which is your third house. So you're definitely, you know, seeing where your, uh, where you have these scorpionic traits in your day-to-day -day life where you're like I like I've already kind of named off where you're kind of attached to certain things in your day-to-day -day life. We have Neptune here, which can be very illusionary, right? Like then Pluto, transformation. So it definitely is it's like your perception is transforming majorly this month. The way that you're seeing things is definitely changing this month. And you're starting to see things in in a new way, which is going to feel so much more clear and true to who you are, right? But we have to let go. We have to see through the illusion of like, oh, this is taking forever. I'm just waiting around or, oh, when I try to do something, then that takes forever. And then I'm just right back in this situation. And so it's like, the it's all in the way that you're seeing it, Virgo. It's all in your perception this month. And so if you can remember that, or come back to this if you're struggling throughout the month, then I think, you know, if you can remember that, you'll be fine, right? So that is what I'm seeing for you, Virgo. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated or if you feel like you could see these things happening in the month of October. Uh, definitely keep me up to date. And also, if you would like to support me and what I do here and get uh, a horoscope every single week on the astrology for every single day, I do a horoscope uh, each week over on my Patreon along with other exclusive content that you can only get over there. So if you are interested, definitely see the description below to sign up for my Patreon. I also do readings. I also uh, have a ton of courses, classes, etc. And you can also follow me on social media. All of that is linked down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching Virgo. I truly, truly appreciate it. And that concludes this video. I will see you guys in the next one.